there. But for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, what did fail her. Yeah, was to it was another era. She was 22, mm. was supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Good morning and welcome to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and on your smart speaker. And I'm with you live from 10 until 1. Coming up in this hour, J.K. Rowling has challenged police in Scotland to arrest her for stating the fact that trans women are men. The Harry Potter author tweeted, Freedom of speech and belief are at an end in Scotland if the accurate description of biological sex is deemed criminal. And she hit out at the SNP's controversial new hate crime law. I certainly hope that the top I'm wearing today doesn't breach it. Plus, the British National and six other aid workers have been killed in a suspected Israeli airstrike in Gaza. The charity World Central Kitchen called the attack unforgivable as the Israeli military said they're carrying out an in-depth examination to understand the circumstances of this tragic incident. And the row over Angela Rayner's council house refuses to go away. The former head of Parliament's standards watchdog has called for a full police investigation to determine if Labour's deputy leader broke the law. All that, plenty more besides. First thing, let's get the latest news headlines with Emily Rose Adams. Good morning. Three children have been injured in a school shooting in Finland. Police were called to a primary school located north of Helsinki to reports of another child opening fire on pupils. The suspect, a minor, was detained at the scene. Locals have been told to stay away from the area with an investigation underway. A British aid worker has been killed in what's reported to be an Israeli airstrike in Gaza. He's one of five volunteers for the charity Wealth Central Kitchen who died in the attack. The others were Polish and Australian nationals. Well, in a statement, the charity said this is a tragedy and that humanitarian aid workers should never be a target, ever. Well, from Tel Aviv, journalist Yotam Confino has told Talk TV, while it is a tragedy, it's too soon to blame the IDF. If it was Israel that was behind this, they need to be held accountable. Absolutely. But we cannot already conclude that this was an Israeli airstrike that killed uh, these people. So I think we need to first of all wait and see what the investigation is going to come up with. Meanwhile, Israel's military is pulled out of Al Shifa hospital after a two-week raid that has left it in ruins. Gaza's officials say dozens of bodies have been found. Israel claims to have killed 200 terrorists and found weapons and intelligence. The Labour Party claims conservative turmoil under Rishi Sunak has cost the taxpayer £8.2 billion and nearly a year in lost time. This morning, Labour's unveiled a website called The Cost of Chaos, which includes a bill calculating the cost of by-elections, ministerial reshuffles and policy U-turns, like scrapping the northern leg of HS2 during Rishi Sunak's time as Prime Minister. And the shadow Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, Pat McFadden's, told us their calculations are cautious. It adds up to billions of pounds and it won't stop because they never stop. They're already manoeuvring around Rishi Sunak now. Uh, the leadership candidates are already plotting. And if the Tories were to win the next election, this kind of thing and this cost would all simply carry on. Rishi Sunak says the government is delivering on its childcare plan as the first parents in England benefit from 15 hours of taxpayer-funded care for two-year-olds. The policy which came into effect yesterday is the first phase of a plan to dramatically expand funded childcare for working parents. The Prime Minister says the plan will build a brighter future for families and help to grow our economy. But Labour says that families will struggle to access places. And former Home Office advisor Claire Pearsall says now nurseries need to find ways to manage the extra places. I think we have to be really careful that you don't try and do too much too soon when you haven't got a guarantee of the places. Mm. If you speak to childcare providers, they're really concerned that they don't have the capacity to take in the funded places. So we need to ensure that we build out the capacity. 
Donald Trump's avoided having his assets seized after posting a $175 million bond in his civil fraud case. The former U.S. president was at risk of having prime real estate like Trump Tower and his Mar-a-Lago estate taken away from him. In February, he was found guilty of scheming to deceive banks and insurers by inflating his wealth. And breakthrough technology will be offered to tens of thousands of people in England with type 1 diabetes. The so-called artificial pancreas uses a glucose sensor under the skin to calculate how much insulin is delivered from a pump automatically. The NHS will start contacting patients to offer the new system later on this month. That's the latest. Now time for a look at today's weather with Isabel Lang. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. It's looking unsettled again this week with further low pressure systems coming in from the southwest. In fact, you can see this wet weather pushing in across the south through the course of today. It looks as though it'll be a miserable afternoon and evening. Ahead of that, some showers, but some bright spells. Coldest weather where we keep that persistent rain in central and eastern Scotland. And here, quite a chilly east or northeasterly wind. Elsewhere, it is quite mild. Temperatures into the mid teens in places. We keep that wet weather in the northeast tonight, bit of snow for higher ground. Elsewhere, it's this low driving the rain northwards that we're talking about. So, quite wet weather developing for many central areas. The brighter yellow showing the heavier burst running up through Wales into the Midlands and then eventually up into uh, northern England. Really horrible, actually, out there. In the south, though, it'll turn a bit bit drier by morning, but it will be mild, as you can see. Temperatures no lower than around 10 in the south. On Wednesday, then, we get that wet weather stuck across central areas. Uh, quite heavy rain and not particularly tr nice if you're travelling. Uh, local flooding possible as well. Driest across the far northwest of Scotland and also in the south. It should turn a bit drier through the afternoon with some brighter spells and a high of 12 to 15. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning and welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley-Brewer and you are with Talk TV. Great to, to be back in the studio. Big thanks to all those who've uh, stood in for the last week. Joining me right now to run through all the biggest stories of the day is the editor of Spike Online, Tom Slater. Good morning to you. Good morning. Um, now, I always try and, I used to try and be quite smart and quite, you know, mm. uh, I mean, for, for the telly folk, I know the radio folk couldn't care less. I get that. <laughs> I'm right, um, About you know, a jacket was dressing. But today I'm wearing a T-shirt and I'm hoping... I'm hoping I don't end up falling foul of the new uh, hate crime laws in Scotland. It says woman, uh, women is the plural noun, adult, human, female. I mean, the statement has previously got an awful lot of people in trouble uh, because apparently we, apparently anyone could be a woman if they just say, oh, I'm a woman today, uh, then they are a woman. That appears to be uh, what many people on the, well, I would say the woke left, the Labour, SNP, Lib Dems, and indeed many in the Tory party astonishingly seem to believe these days. Um, we have seen an awful lot of people who have lost their jobs, uh, who have been censored, who have been basically cancelled mm -hmm. uh, for stating uh, their... Not their belief, the fact that a woman is an adult human female and therefore not a man who thinks he's a woman and therefore trans women are not women, they are men. A statement, I would say, of simple biological fact. There's no hatred involved in that at all. However, under new hate crime laws that came into force yesterday in Scotland, we are told, including by a Scottish minister, that actually stating that a trans woman, i.e. a man, is a man, could be in breach of that law and at the very least could get you investigated by the police and it could even lead to a record, a non-crime haste incident or even a criminal record. Well, J.K. Rowling, the wonderful Harry Potter author who has been a fantastic uh, 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 person on this issue, she challenged Scottish police to use the new hate crime laws to arrest her when she returns to Scotland after a holiday she's currently on for Easter after her views on transgender issues and she simply tweeted very, very, very clearly um, that... Um, uh, you know, I look forward to being arrested when I return to the birthplace of the Scottish Enlightenment and made it very, very clear that people who have been called trans women, including rapists like Isla Bryson and others, are simply uh, men in women's clothing. Um, what do you make of this whole row? It's, it's turned into an absolute circus for Hamza Youssef, and it was always going to. We've seen a lot of examples of kind of woke state censorship in recent years across the UK. Yeah, not just, not in, just Scotland, in Scotland. Is worth saying. But at the same time, this bill, in terms of how far it overreaches, in terms of how far it goes in 
criminalising basically common sense, biological facts in this mm. case. And this was, a law, this was a law that was pushed through by Humza Yusuf when exactly. he was Justice Secretary. His fingerprints are all over Scotland, it. And now he's First Minister. Absolutely. And people are forgetting about just how extensive it is. This is applies to materials that might be in your possession. This isn't just something that you're saying out in public. There's obviously the abolition of the dwelling defence in relation to Explain things you English. say in your own home. Because even within our UK system where you have hate speech laws and whatever, there is this understanding that if you're saying something around the dinner table or in your own home, how can that be something which should be encroached yeah. upon by the law? that's done away with in terms of this legislation. So your kids can knock on you, basically. Exactly. You know, your grandmother's round with slightly fruity views. That could be yeah. a problem if someone reports it to the police. This is insane. And I think what we're seeing with this backlash, which was always going to come, has been fantastic, is they're almost calling Hamza Youssef and the state's bluff. They're saying, yeah. if you really want to go this far, you can't lock up all of us. And I think what's been great about all of this campaigning and activism led by J.K. Rowling and others is that it's... It's showing how absurd as well as how authoritarian this yeah, is. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and it is absurd because it is. I mean, when people use the phrase Orwellian, I mean, mm. you know, it's overused, but oh my God, this really is Orwellian. And it's Stalinist in terms of, you know, you're being forced to say things that you do not believe or do not know to be true um, and are under the threat of having a record. Now, a lot of people say, of course, people aren't going to be arrested for this. Of course, people aren't going to get a criminal record for this. But it's already happened across mm -hmm. the UK, actually. And, and the key thing about this is it's not that... It's, we're not talking about me saying to either on Twitter or to someone's face or in any other communication, you know, and saying to, say, someone who... A man who is living as a trans woman and saying horrible, abusive words uh, to that person and you're a woman... You know, so you're a, you're a man and being really abusive and, and aggressive. We're talking about simply stating... Live your life, as, as J.K. Rowling has always done, live your life, be free, wear what you want, it's fine. But you're not a woman. Mm -hmm. you, you're, you're a man and you will always... You cannot change biological sex. It's biological sex is immutable. So, that, you know, I won't, I won't accept that you are a woman and therefore I won't accept that you're allowed access to women's safe spaces. This is a crucial thing. People say, it doesn't matter to you. Well, it does when you're in the toilets. Well, it does when you're in a changing room. It does uh, if you're in a hospital ward. It does if you are in a women's refuge or if you're going to uh, seek help for domestic violence. And it does if you are behind bars, as mm -hmm. J.K. Rowling one day may be. Uh, and you you could have a, a, a rapist, a, a male rapist put in with you who's, who suddenly claims after he's charged that he's a woman. So it, it does matter to women. But the crucial thing about this is you, you, can, you, you, yeah, you cannot be abusive. You cannot have said anything that the average person in the street would think, wouldn't even bat an eyelid mm. at. But also, someone could not have taken offence who you spoke to. They could be absolutely fine with your conversation, even, you know, perfectly nice conversation. But someone else mm -hmm. who... Uh, doesn't even overhear it. They are told about it, can say, I believe that this was transgression of this hate crime law. Mm -hmm. I want you arrested. And by the way, you don't have to be in Scotland. I tweeted yesterday, trans women are not women, trans women are men. Um, <laughs> and I, arrest me. I've said it before, Scottish police. Arrest me. I refuse. I refuse to be forced to state something I know to be untrue. Uh, and and, and if, that is, if it is necessary that I have to go to prison to hold up then so be it. J.K. Rowling feels exactly the same way, so do all of the other female campaigners and many men as well. But the crucial thing is, you, know, you, you could end up in prison, you can, in theory. Uh, you'll certainly be likely to end up with a hate crime, uh, a non-hate crime incident record. Mm -hmm. And we've seen this, haven't we, with uh, Murdo Fraser, a Scottish uh, MP, uh, who, who has, who, the Free Speech Union had to get involved. To, to, to basically expunge his record. And people are getting records. They've got it. They don't even know it. They're applying for jobs when, when they, the, the employer is looking for their, their record. This comes up. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And it's one of those things where you can't help but think that maybe this is just going to collapse under the weight of how absurd and kafka yeah. and authoritarian They can't arrest all of us. No, exactly. But it's also worth remembering, as we were gesturing to earlier, is the fact that even before this new hate crime act in Scotland, you had people who were having their collars felt dragged through the courts yep. in Scotland and in England for yep. things like misgendering. People that happened to Kate Scott, a radical feminist, who was thrown in a prison cell for seven hours um, and charged and eventually convicted, but had her conviction overturned. That was in England. Mm -hmm. There was a Christian preacher in Leeds who had a similar experience because he called a trans-identified male on the street, sir and gentleman. Again, he ended up having yeah. his conviction overturned. What a, what a horrible man. But it got yeah. as far as conviction in England yeah. without this hate crime act. And and there's been cases of Scotland that have come before this as well. And as you say, it's so authoritarian and so wide-ranging that sometimes even in these cases, it's a police officer 
who's taken offence to this and has reported yeah. it. It's not even, as you say, the person who is on the receiving end of such speech. It's not even necessarily someone Police who's officers there. who apparently don't have a problem with someone holding a swastika placard at a, uh, at a, at a Gaza uh, demonstration in, mm. on Saturday, because it's all about the context, but does have an issue with the word man or woman. But this is, it's a bit rich. I swear, I thought Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, remember him? Um, uh, he gave his support to J.K. Rowling, saying that the Conservatives would always protect free speech. He said people should not be criminalised for stating simple facts on biology. We believe in free speech in this country and Conservatives will always protect it. Well, I hate to tell you, Prime Minister, under your watch, under the watch of Liz Truss and Boris Johnson and David Cameron before you, this has happened. This wasn't a thing Mm -hmm. um, before the Tories came to power. Maybe it was about to happen, we were going to you know, bring it in from America, I don't know. But this wasn't a thing, and now it very much is. And it's all happened under the Tory watch. And the Free Speech Union, they've said they've, got a, a, they've opened an office. I'm a member of the Free Speech Union. I donated to them yesterday because I want them to have the... Uh, I mean, I, I encourage anyone to do so, so they have the, 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 the funds and the powers to actually protect people. But, you know, they, they, they represent thousands of people every year who are losing their jobs, who are being cancelled, uh, you know, who can't get another job as a result and who are being, and who being you know, criminalised for stating basic facts. 40% of those, uh, Toby Young, the EFSU boss, has said 40% of those are, are about this so-called misgendering, of course, mm. correctly gendering people. I mean, it is extraordinary. I'd love to hear your views, by the way. Love to hear your views. I wonder where you'll stand on this. Uh, J.K. Rowling has challenged Scottish police to arrest her over a new hate crime law that criminalises calling a trans woman a man. Do you support her? And tell us why you do. Tell us why you don't. I would love to hear from you. You can give us a call on 0344 499 1000, text on 8722, or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Calls to charge at the national rate. Text costs one standard network rate message. Uh, well, let, let's move on. There are other stories. Let's talk a little bit about um, Tory plotting. Uh, the latest talk of uh, some... I mean, this is so difficult to keep up, isn't it? About whether or not there will be, you know, when's the election? Now it appears Michael Gove has suggested November election. Uh, I always thought October personally, but this Tory faction, the the pop cons, the ones that, that um, Liz Truss did the launch of, uh, they are launching a plan to install a Liz Truss style candidate as the next Tory leader after a, a presumed general election loss. Um, Things are looking very bad. I mean, we are, you know, we've got that record 5,000 channel migrant crossing so far in 2024. I mean, good thousand plus more than we had mm -hmm. last year. NHS waiting list, 250 people dying every single week because they can't, uh, they're not getting seen quickly in A&E. People waiting a month to see a GP. You know, we just had council tax go up by 5%. I mean, let, energy bills down, council tax up, et cetera. Is there any chance at all of Rishi Sunak turning any of this around? No, and I don't think there's much chance of anyone who might replace him between now and October or November turning it around. It's quite clear. It's been clear for some time that the Tories can't win the next election. The question has been, by how much are they going to lose it? And it's not obvious how they could stem... The sorts of losses. I think a lot of the numbers we've seen kicked around in recent days about they're going to go down to 100 seats, it's going to be a humbling on a scale of what happened 100 or so years ago, um, may well turn out to be something which isn't borne out in the, in the election finally. Who knows? Not least because of the fact that he is gifted with terrible opposition in the form of Keir Starmer. He's just been winning by default really yeah. in recent There's months. There's not much enthusiasm. For absolutely. And it, I mean, I by the way, anything it's... that we think is bad now, it's only going to get worse <laughs> under <laughs> Keir Starmer, isn't it? Absolutely. And that's one thing that is worth remembering. Things can only get worse under Labour, in many respects. <laughs> Things <laughs> can only get worse. No, that does stop. Now. Doesn't quite. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. But that is the tune we'll all be dancing to. Uh, yeah. But, but it is enough. extraordinary, isn't it, when you look at these facts and figures. But there's still some talk about trying to replace... Uh, him before the next mm -hmm. election, depending on... I mean, it's, it's a month today to the local elections. We've got big mayoral elections as well. Um, and everyone's expected that that could be an absolute disaster for the Tories. You lose a load of Tory councillors as yeah. well. Then what do you do? Do you think there will be a load of letters, a flurry of letters going into the 1922 committee? I think that could well happen. I think the problem is, is that everything feels very uncoordinated and all over the place. You've got all of these different factions, many of which have appeared in the past six months or so, split yeah. off from other ones, who are taking different, different positions. <laughs> No, exactly, the pop cons, there's, this, there's the five families now, there's the common sense group, there's the new conservatives and so on. Um, it has become kind of very much reminiscent sort of rats fighting in a sack. And I think as a consequence of that, it's going to make things very unwieldy. You could end up with a leadership contest, not because there's been a kind of coordinated, yeah. plotted, concerted push, just because enough people get so angry that it just bubbles up to that. And it's but... very different, isn't it, from, say, when Boris Johnson was ousted over Partygate, there was all that anger over mm -hmm. a very specific issue. Um, and then... 
um, you know, and, and then it was like, okay, there's, there's some, there are a couple of obvious contenders, yeah. um, uh, you know, if you But even before, when Theresa May, when she was ousted, it was Boris Johnson. Absolutely, everyone yeah. knew it was going to be Boris Johnson. Um, you know, that, but there doesn't seem to be anyone everyone's uniting around, does there? Um, let's also talk uh, about what's happening overseas. We've heard a lot of the news there about Gaza. Mm -hmm. um, seven aid workers uh, killed uh, by, it is believed to be an, an IDF bomb. The IDF, the Israeli Defence Forces, are investigating what's happened. Um, it's, this is the, believed to be the first time that foreign aid workers have mm -hmm. been killed, including a Brit and an Australian as well. Uh, they were in a, a convoy, a humanitarian and convoy, we're told, uh, in, a, in, a, in a white van that was wet, what was marked with uh, the, uh, the, the identity of the, uh, of the, the charity uh, that, uh, that we're travelling with. This is the World Central Kitchen, a well-known charity. The, the charity has said, look, you know, we always notify where we're going to be. Mm -hmm. and where we're going. Uh, they carry out very important work. These are incredibly brave people. I mean, salute anybody who's brave enough to go and do this work, um, saving lives. Um, however, I mean... <laughs> Do you think it's likely this would have been deliberate targeting? I mean, I, I'm, surely Israelis know that their, you know, their, their world PR is bad enough as it is. They wouldn't be targeting aid workers. Um, unfortunately, innocent people die in wars. Mm. I mean, it's, it seems unlikely that this was something which was a conscious decision, but that's precisely why you need a full and thorough investigation as much as that is possible in a war zone. It was interesting seeing the response from the IDF originally. This wasn't a situation in which they came out all guns blazing, so to speak, saying this isn't to do with us, we're investigating and so on. There was a call just for for time to look into this properly, which may indicate that maybe there's um, there's more concern that it was a, a horrendous yeah. accident rather than something. But we've seen we've seen these there. issues before, haven't we, with you know, attacks on the hospital in mm -hmm. northern Gaza and you know and claims from Hamas mm -hmm. and, and claims from other sides as well. Um, but we've also got the Al Shifa hospital. For two weeks, Israeli forces have been in the hospital. Mm. And if you're watching on uh, on the TV or online, you'll be able to see. I mean, this some of the footage is extraordinary. They've been there for two weeks. Uh, we know, you know, patients have uh, been moved out. Patients, it's been claimed that patients are, are, are malnourished, have missed out on treatment. There's barely any medical aid there at all, anyway. This is the biggest hospital in the Gaza Strip, and I mean, burnt out. Um, you know, a, a massive, big complex. I mean, again. I'm assuming the IDF are in there for a very good reason. They've not been there for two weeks. We, we know that we know that Hamas uh, operate, you know, underneath, uh, you know, hospitals and schools and, and apartment buildings. That is what that is what they do. It's believed that you know people are hiding out. The IDF claimed again. We can't verify this. IDF claimed that uh, they have you know found stash of weapons and money and the like. But again, this all feeds in. Both of these stories they feed into this general view mm -hmm. that. You know that civilians and that that that, that civilian targets are are just being you know deliberately targeted mm -hmm. uh, by the IDF, um, and we know Hamas is winning the propaganda war because we can see after that United Nations vote and 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 the way that, you know the Americans are pulling back David Cameron, our foreign secretary as well, from support for Israel. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and it's something that doesn't seem to. It seems like the narrative is almost impervious to the facts at this point because we all remember the assault on Al Shifa Hospital a few months ago, um, where. Again, there was all this conversation. They're targeting a hospital. The hospital should never be military targets. Of course, you had the IDF saying, no, this is, a, this is a base of Hamas operations. This is what they do. They're quite happy with putting their own innocent civilians in harm's way. And then, of course, after they did conduct that raid, they produced caches full of weapons and extensive tunnel network under the hospital. There was that footage, everyone will remember, of Hamas fighters wielding meat cleavers, yeah. bringing bloodied hostages into the hospital. And again, people just forget about this. And even though, like at Al Shifa, there have been reports for many years from Amnesty International and so on, saying that it had been used as a base of mass operations to everyone forgets that torture Fatah people, members of the Fatah party, and so on. So it's just one of those situations where it feels like, regardless of the situation, regardless of the operation, Israel is presumed not only to be guilty but to be almost bloodthirsty. Yeah. And that's something that I think those of us who are trying to understand this conflict and trying to form a reasoned view on it really need to reject that kind of propaganda yeah being absolutely and again you know, there's a difference between what we know and what we are being told exactly can i just want to just finally i just want to uh, talk about team gb mm. we've got we've got the fuss over the the uh the sort of the woke flag on the back of the shirt for uh, the england players at the euro starting in uh, in germany in june we've also of course got paris olympics in july uh, and there's been a fury according to the front page of the sun today over team gb's diverse pink and purple union jack uh, i think if you're watching it's basically it's a very fussy 
sort of, oh, I mean, it's just horrible. It's just horrible. It's a union, it's a union flag, but instead of it being red, white and blue, it's, it's just got a whole load of, of pink and purple and squiggles and swirls. I mean, frankly, whoever designed this should be taken out and shot because they, they really, I mean, did you go to design school? It's horrible. But of course, again, it's that, it's the, we're told it's diverse and again, it's woke. It seems to me to be really, really basic that the flag and the design, everything for our, for our, our country should yeah. always reflect the colors of the flag. And like you, my, Is it complicated? Well, my objection was primarily, primarily aesthetic rather than patriotic. A lot of the stuff they say, we want to, you know, refresh it, we want to do this, yeah. we want to do that. First of all, these are very iconic designs by definition. If it's the Union you don't flag refresh or cross, it. Yeah. George, it's quite well established in people's minds. Um, but also, you, you see the reasons as to why they're changing it. And it's not purely, oh, we thought this would be interesting, we try something different. It always gets wrapped up, doesn't it, in this language yeah. of diversity and so on. And that, I think... It's, no, it's, really a, diverse, it's, it's a diverse design system. And um, they, 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 decided, they decided that our red, white and blue colours were not unique. I mean, oh, I'm so sorry other countries have a flag with the same colours. I mean, <laughs> it, it is quite bizarre, isn't it? I mean, no, we just vote no. No, thank you very much. Please stop doing this. We just like our flag to be... And a little icon of the lion. We've got the lion that comes mm -hmm. in. Every, that's thank you very much. Otherwise, red, white and blue, thank you very much for playing. Anyway, uh, let's get back to the question of hate laws. I hate this flag. Let's get back to hate laws in Scotland. We're asking about JK Rowling. She's challenged Scottish police to arrest her over the new hate crime law that criminalises calling a trans woman a man. Do you support her? Tell us why you do. Tell us why you don't. Give us a call. 0344 499 1000. Text on 87222. Or you can get in touch on X at Talk TV. Julie's got in touch to say, I have so much respect for JK Rowling. I'll stand with her 100%. Lucy, he says, having an opinion doesn't make you hateful. The truth cannot and must never be suppressed. And Matt says, for her sake, I hope they don't arrest her. For society's sake, I hope they do, because it will draw a lot of attention to the perverse anti-speech laws. I'm with you all the way on that. You've also been getting in touch on the phones. Please do keep those calls coming in. Let's go to Kenny, who is in Scotland. Hello, Kenny. Hey, good morning, Gillian. How are you good, today? Very good. I'm very well indeed. Now, Kenny, uh, what do you make of these laws? Hey, I think the laws are... Basically, the details. And the point I would like to get uh, him to use the answer is when he goes to prayers on Friday um, and a, a woman turns up identifying as a man, is she going to be allowed to into the area where the males are praying? Because I know the Muslims, males and females, um, pray in different areas. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. If, if, they, if, they is allowed, if they are allowed in, then I think uh, it would put Hamza Yusuf in a different, uh, difficult position with his own party. But, that, no, but, but this is the thing, isn't it? Is that people, politicians, and we saw that with J.K. Rowe, don't, sorry, J.K. Rowe, Nicola Sturgeon, sorry, um, and was, they, they claim, and, and J.K. Thomas, they claim to believe that a trans woman is, is a woman, and yet, like, oh, except if they rape and then they're a man and then they go into a man's prison and, and they, they kind of get all confused about it. But actually, what it shows is they don't really believe what they're telling us they believe. No, that, that's exactly true. They don't believe it. And like I say, if, I, if the woman, uh, if the trans man wasn't allowed to pray in, that, in the male area, then surely the man and the mosque would be uh, charged under the hate crime yeah. laws because they're not accepting how the person is self-identifying. Yeah, absolutely. Completely agree. I mean, you, are you going to, I mean, are you willing to take the risk of being, being arrested or questioned by the police on this? Hey, I'll, I'll carry on the way I always have and say what I believe. And if somebody takes offence at it, then I'll just need to deal with that when the time arises. I like your approach, I'm certainly, I'm certainly not. I'm certainly not going to uh, restrict my, my beliefs when I speak to people. Good I'm, for I'm, you. I'm not going to offend them deliberately. No. Um, I'll be kind and courteous as I usually am, but uh, certainly not going to say something that I believe to be wrong. Absolutely. Stand with you all the way, Kenny. Really appreciate you calling there, Kenny in Scotland. Coming up after the break, we're going to talk more about this with the fabulous and wonderful Helen Joyce, who I'm sure, like me, would be happy to share a police cell or a prison cell with J.K. Rowling. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer, and you're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online, and we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Oi, oi, treat girl.
JK Rowling says, let's just be honest. That's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, a trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yeah. Quite yeah. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss it. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't <laughs> too keen on that. I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you've got> <laughs> Yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family, and if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer, and you are with Talk TV. Now, J.K. Rowling has challenged police in Scotland to arrest her for stating the fact, it's not a belief, the fact that trans women are men. And the Harry Potter also tweeted, freedom of speech and belief are at an end in Scotland if the accurate description of biological sex is deemed criminal. This as she hit out at the SNP's controversial new hate crime law, as I say, came into force yesterday. Well, joining me right now is author of Trans and a Director of Advocacy at Sex Matters, Helen Joyce. Good morning to you, Helen. Hi. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I suppose my first question I want to ask you, for those who are watching on video or on TV, was whether my T-shirt would be in breach if it was broadcast in Scotland. Uh, it's a T-shirt that says woman, women, the plural, noun, adult, human, female. So, by definition, I would have thought that a man who thinks that he's transitioned to be a woman is not a woman because he's not an adult, human, female. I mean, it, would, that, would that put me in breach of the Scottish hate laws, hate crime laws? Well, nobody, nobody will know until somebody complains about you and the police investigate. Oh, well, please so do complain, problem, everybody. Do, please do complain. Very, very happy for that to go ahead. Look, I'm sure you were as thrilled as I was when you saw J.K. Rowling's very long thread of tweets yesterday from abroad. She's on holiday, basically listing a whole... On April Fool's Day, of course, the day this law came in, hilariously, listing a whole load of trans women, i.e. men, some of them sex offenders, one a TV broadcaster, others models, UN women's representatives and others, and, and talking about them in a jokey way as if they were all women and they go, ha ha, April Fool, of course these people are old men. And basically saying, arrest me. She actually put the hashtag, arrest me, if it's illegal to say that. Could she be arrested? I mean, what will happen is that she'll get reported and then they'll look at it. And if they want, they can come and talk to her, check that it was her who made those tweets. And what happens next is anybody's guess. The threshold for investigating further on the basis of um, th this new law when it comes to the trans strand specifically is just that it was abusive. 
So abusive words don't have to be threatening or violent. They don't, they can be just one instance of words. So, you know, it looks like, yes, maybe if you think that saying a man is a, a man is abusive. And that's exactly what the trans lobby has been pushing for the past decade, that if a man doesn't want to be called a man and you call him a man, that that's like using the N word for a black person. But obviously it's not. Man is not a slur. It's just the ordinary name for half of all adult humans. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what we've got to win back. We've got to just keep calling men men and dare them to arrest us if that's what they're going to do Absolutely. and establish that that is not a slur. Uh, it, 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 exactly. And again, it's rather insulting to men to pretend it's a slur. And this issue only seems to happen when we talk about misgendering, I would say correctly gendering somebody um, when it's in this direction. But that's particularly because of the implications of allowing a man to call himself a woman, a trans woman, and then to say that a trans woman is a woman and, and, and are just as equal with women and, and uh, are able to get the same rights as women, is because women, for very clear physical reasons, have safe spaces in a way that men don't. No man is scared or intimidated by a woman going, can I use your loos because there's a long queue outside the ladies. No man is intimidated. Right? They might be a bit embarrassed but not intimidated by having a woman in a hospital bed next to them or, or the like. But women have had safe spaces for many, many years for a reason, because we are physically weaker and we are vulnerable to the bad men who would attack us. And the funny thing is, we don't know who the bad men are, so we need to ban all men from those spaces. Established, accepted by all, all women and all men until, well, just a few years ago, when suddenly we were told we were bad people if we wouldn't accept any man who even just put a wig on in our safe spaces. So this law, this law, this law matters because what it undermines matters. Yeah, exactly, because it's taking away from us our ability to say, to advocate for our own human rights. Like, it's exactly a reversal. What they're saying is that it's hateful for us to say that this man is a man. But actually, for us, it's hateful to stop us from saying that this man is a man. We can't stand up for our rights unless we can say who's a man and who's a woman. I mean, I tweeted similar things to JK Rowling yesterday, obviously not picked yeah. up and not written as well as hers. But I have There's already been told reason why she's uh, a multimillionaire <laughs> <laughs> I think she's wonderful because she's doing this to act as a shield for women who can't afford to take the hit the way that she did. She's an absolute superhero. She's the biggest beneficiary to women's rights in the world today. And, you know, she does it really for the good of other women mm -hmm. and not for herself. It would be so easy for her to stay silent on this yeah. and just let other people take the, the heat, like all, all the other celebrities are. Well, well, exactly. And indeed, those who've attacked her, there's all those who've had that made their careers and their fortunes from uh, being, you know, in her films and uh, 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 that, that she wrote from, from those amazing Harry Potter books. Um, this is the interesting thing. There's a lot of people say, oh, God, why are you going on about this? Why are you trying to play these culture wars? What's your issue? Why do you have a problem with this? But the, but the reality is we didn't start this culture war. This is a war that's been waged against women. Um, and I would say in the case of, you know, so-called trans kids, you know, against children as well, um, and against society as well. And people don't realise often, you know, it's not just the JK Rowling's. People say, well, she's fine. She can afford the medical, so the medical, the, the, the lawyer's fees. And, you know, they're not stupid enough to put her behind bars. But there are thousands of other people in ordinary jobs who are being hounded out of their jobs. They are being sacked. Uh, they are being cancelled. They're being censored. And there are millions more who are too afraid to say anything because they fear that will happen to them. This is very That's right. real. That's right, it's the chilling effect. So people who can't afford to take the hit or who are just, you know, not as brave as she is and not everybody is as brave as her, they have to stay quiet. Um, and if you are reported and they go as far as investigating you, they can do so anywhere in the UK. They can ask your police force anywhere in the UK to come and visit you. Uh, the police force can ask to take your phone, uh, not ask, actually just take your phone and your computer if they want to establish a pattern of behaviour. They keep them for weeks or months and probably in the end you won't be charged, but already the process has been the punishment. You know, when you've got a, an aggrieved bunch of very aggressive people who think that naming their sex is abusive. You're set up for a disaster here. There was an amendment, Joanne Lamont, a wonderful Scottish politician, put forward an amendment that would have explicitly said that anything to do with stating people's sex or stating that sex is binary and so on will be excluded. And the Scottish government decided yeah. not to allow that amendment. That's what they should have done because all the vexatious stuff is going to be on the trans strand. It and is. it's all going to be about targeting women.
And, and that's the thing, it is, is interesting how much more the targeting and the abuse has happened to women who speak out on this rather than men, although Graham Linhan, I think, is, a, is an exception on, on this. But this is the thing, as you pointed out, this, this is a law in Scotland, but if, you know, my tweet, your tweet, this show can be seen in Scotland, I'm wearing this T-shirt, some might not like it, they can say... Um, please, Scottish police, I'm reporting to you. This is either a non-crime haze incident or a crime. And um, and can you please ask, you know, the Metropolitan Police or whoever to come and investigate? And as you say also, you know, the process is the punishment. It, you know, people, you know, they lose their jobs as a result of this. They, they you know, they're under the stigma. Uh, you say having your phone confiscated. These, these, are, these have a massive impact on people's lives. And people are scared. Um, do you think that... Um, that the, the Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, stepping in and saying that uh, he, uh, he supports uh, J.K. Rowling, saying people should not be criminalised for stating simple facts on biology. We believe in free speech in this country and Conservatives will always protect it. Um, do you think that passed muster, given that actually all of this has happened under the Conservative watch? I mean, this is a law that was passed in the Scottish Parliament, so that's not something that Rishi Sunak can directly no, but, uh, influence. But, but these cancellations and people facing non-crime hate incidents in England all happen under the Tories. Completely. I mean, it, it's it's hard to explain to people who haven't been up against it. But um, you know, when there's a law on the books, it. It's not enough to just say what the law says and what will happen if you go to court. What matters is how it's policed. You know, I and friends have experience of this. We know what it's like when the police come and say to you, you know, this, you shouldn't have tweeted this. And you're like, well, what law are you talking about? And they don't care. You know, they're not trained or they've been mistrained by somebody like Stonewall. And that's where I think the government really should have acted a lot earlier, is to kick people like Stonewall out of training the police yeah. because they've been training the police and they've been telling them flatly that it is abusive or a hate crime, even before the Scottish law and even in the rest of the UK, uh, to for women to say, sorry, you're not a woman, get out of my space. So, you know, that's where he should have acted. It's not this new law that is the problem for him to fix. It's the problem of the last 10 years of lobby groups misrepresenting the law and going into public sector institutions like the police, mistraining them, and then encouraging ordinary citizens to think false things, like that a man has the right to force women to say that he's a woman if that's what he wants. Yeah. That's what I'd like to see him do something about. Yeah, and that's the thing. The talk is all very good, you know, but but people losing their jobs uh, as a result of this, losing their livelihoods. Um, Challenger, as you know, I mean, I'm your biggest fan. You've been a fantastic advocate on this, and um, I will very happily share a prison cell with you. I think, I think, frankly, I think women's prisons will be an absolute. Thank you. Who I, love, I look forward to it. It'll be a holiday. <laughs> Thank you, Helen. Uh, she's the author of Trans Gender Identity and the New Battle for Women's Rights, and say also director of advocacy at Sex Matters. Still with me in the studio is editor of Spiked Online, Tom Sid. I have to say. You you have been a, a great ally. I think that's what we talk about now, ally. Are you an ally? You've been a great ally on this <laughs> issue as well. Best. But again, it's just, I think most people are. They all think this is mad. We're not talking about going up to someone who's, who's trans in the street or, and they're going, Oi, you're a man, really. You know, we're not talking about, you know, you can be polite and respectful and kind, but you're just saying, no, I'm sorry. I refuse to accept that you should be allowed in the women's mm -hmm. news. I refuse to think that, you know, this is just about protecting honesty, fact, and women's safety. Absolutely. And it's also about denying a kind of weapon that the trans activists have been wielding for a, lot, for a long time. Even, as I say, with UK-wide laws, with English mm -hmm. and Welsh law, there has been this concerted effort to try and weaponise pieces of legislation that the police often don't understand very well, yeah. to try and just bring down critics of gender ideology, to send yeah. the police around, to, in some cases to use police forces as someone's like personal hit squad, basically, whenever anyone criticises them. That's got to stop. And I think it's as important in England and the rest of the UK as it is in Scotland because of the fact that we do have an incoming Labour government. Keir Starmer is making noises about extending hate crime yeah. laws. And, and Labour identity. and the Lib Dems and the Greens backed this SNP law. Absolutely. And did not back that amendment, which Helen Joyce mentioned. And I think making a big noise about this, really pushing back, is important for across the UK yep. because it sends a very clear signal that people won't put up with this. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Tom Slater. Now, we are asking you today about JK Rowling challenging the Scottish police to arrest her over those hate crime laws. 
else. I want to know, do you support her? Uh, tell us where you do, tell us why you don't. Give us a call, 0344 499 text on 8722. We'll get in touch on X at Talk TV. I would love to hear from you. Uh, if you don't agree with a JK Reading, tell us why. I'd love you to get in touch on the phones. Uh, Kaz has got in touch and says, a bloke who wears a dress and wig is not a woman, he's a bloke. And I'll carry on saying it. I agree with JK Rowling 100%. Fred says, Humza Yusuf needs to be arrested based on his own law. And Christine says, so now governments want to prosecute anyone who speaks the obvious truth? What kind of clown world are we living in? Oh, hear, hear to that. Uh, on the phones, uh, you've also been getting in touch. Let's go to Helen, who is in Wiltshire. Hello, Helen. Hello, Julia. Hello, thanks for getting in touch. So do you agree with JK or not? Absolutely, yes. I'll be sharing a, a cell with her, no <laughs> doubt. We're going to have, honestly, we're going to have a great time. Uh, absolutely. The whole, whole country's gone mad and the world will be laughing their socks off. Yeah. We really will. We well, apart from America, because they're as mad as we are. <laughs> yes. why, have we why have we come to this? I do, why, why, do you know, but why do you think? Why do you think we have? How did this happen? Well, the left has just infiltrated everything, hasn't it? Yeah. It, it's just... Uh, You've got all the all the institutions, the police, every institution has been doc indoctrinated. Uh, I do not understand why Stonewall has got so powerful. No. But women are women, and and we're losing ground here. Absolutely. We fought for independence, and it's disappearing. Absolutely. And it's mad. Couldn't agree with you more. Helen, thank you very much. The two great Helens on the show already, just the first hour. Coming up after the break, the row over Angela Rayner's council house refuses to go away. This is the former head of Parliament's Standards Watchdog has called for a full police investigation to determine if Labour's deputy leader broke the law. We'll talk about that and plenty more besides up next. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer and you're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And you're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to abandon and eave it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman. Isn't that? Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Hey, Quite hey. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> that, that oh, a, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. We're supposed to, her. We're supposed to was have another moved on from era. That. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth.
Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer and you're with Talk TV. Now, the row over Angela Rayner's council house refuses to go away. The former head of Parliament's Standards Watchdog, Swellister Graham, has called for a full police investigation to determine if Labour's deputy leader broke the law. Joining me now to discuss this and plenty more on the political side is political correspondent at The Spectator, James Hill. Good morning to you, James. Morning, Julia. Thanks very much for joining us. Now, I mean, this, this story has been around for quite a long time. This is from uh, Lord Ashcroft, his book, Michael Ashcroft's book about Angela Rayner, uh, Red Queen. I went to the book launch, sadly. She was not there, uh, unfortunately. I think there were probably too many Dory scum there in the room. Um, but um, it just won't go away. Can you just explain, can you Janet and John this for us, what the actual claims are about her, her sale of her council house many years ago? Sure. So this is about the sale of Angela Rayner's council tax home in 2015. And there are three allegations concerning about this, one of which is that where was she actually living at the time she was supposed to be at this residence? Uh, because obviously, if you have two residences, uh, as is the implication from this book in uh, published by Lord Ashcroft, you have to pay capital gains tax on the secondary residence, which isn't when it's sold. So the question is, when she was living at this residence in 2015, uh, was it her main one or not? If it wasn't her main one, she should have paid capital gains tax of around £1,500 on it. That's the first thing. The second thing is if it wasn't as a primary residence, uh, under right to buy, because it was a former council tax house, uh, there are certain liabilities. For instance, that if you sell it within a certain amount of time, you have to pay more money back to the local authority. And the third thing is, was she making accurate declarations in electoral law about her registered property? Because she declared on various electoral registers that uh, her, primary, her house in Stockport was her main residence. But in fact, if she was living at a secondary place, uh, which, according to reporters, they went around there and uh, local residents there say that she never lived in the primary residence well, at the time. The, some of the language um, is quite fruity. They said one of them called her an effing liar. Absolutely. And so, hang on a sec. You've got local residents in Stockport in Greater Manchester saying, no, actually, the claim, how she claims to be living at, she wasn't living there at the time. Uh, and also, um, uh, her brother was supposedly living there, according to the allegations yeah. in the book, uh, and referred to her as her landlady. So, yeah. hang on a sec. Who was actually living at this residence or not? And the fact is, Julia, the reason why this is going on for two months now is because she simply cannot answer the questions or publish the advice, uh, according to various press conferences she's been given. Yeah, I mean, this is the interesting thing, isn't it? So she avoided doing interviews for a very long time, and then eventually she's done some, but she said, look, she's had advice. But she's, in previously, she has called on other people on, on the, in the Tories to publish their advice when they've got it, and now she's being something of a hypocrite either way. Now, does any of this really matter? Because people will say, it's a long time ago, there's a woman who pulled herself up by her bootstraps from a very harsh, uh, hard upbringing. It was a single mum as a teenager. She's done well in life. But a lot of people would have tried the same. Some people would be saying, it doesn't really matter. We shouldn't we be worrying about, you know, the billionaires not paying tax rather than a, a woman, you know, making her way. I mean, a lot of people would argue that. Well, I think this has inhibited some Tories from making this that case. But the rejoinder to that, of course, Julia, is that Greater Manchester Police consider there's enough evidence to reassess their decision not to investigate, uh, open a police investigation. Well, and they if didn't it's good actually enough for do GMP... a proper investigation. That's when then they were told, asked by the local MP to start, actually do a proper investigation. This mm -hmm. is the problem with the police. They say, we've investigated. No, you haven't. You haven't spoken to anybody. You haven't looked at any paperwork. Of course you, of course you haven't found any evidence. Yeah, and they haven't sent people around to their address. And, of course, if all the local residents are saying she'd ever lived there, that's pretty strong evidence, you'd think, wouldn't it? Mm. Yeah, you would have thought, wouldn't you? Well, of course, I mean, that's a bit of, you know, labour problems at the current time, although I'm not sure that uh, Keir Starmer would be that bothered uh, if he had to lose Angela Rayner as his deputy leader, I'm pretty sure. He has, though, lost some councillors uh, today over his stance on Gaza. Gaza is still, you know, rearing its head over the, uh, uh, over the party. However, um, I suppose it's Rishi Sunak who's still facing the, the biggest woes, 20 points routinely behind in the polls, reform creeping up and up in the polls. Um, lots of talk now. I think Michael Gove, the Housing Secretary, has hinted at a, a November election. They're going to try and push it as late as possible. What do you make of how things stand for the Tory party, and in particular for Rishi Sunak right now? Well, I think this is about the battle for the narrative, really. I think Rishi Sunak in the past 100 days has faced four by-elections, each of which has been lost. And I think they want to try and get out at least a kind of pattern of three months where nothing really goes too badly wrong. And of course, <laughs> they're going to struggle to do that with the May elections next month. I know, I know, I know. So it's going to be a very difficult four weeks for the Prime Minister because I think a lot of Tories are preparing to move against him um, after those May elections. And so I think it's no surprise in those circumstances you're seeing talk of an October 
or a November general election, really, Julia. But there's still been this threat that he could just go to uh, the Queen, sort of apologies, the King at any time and just say, you know, please dissolve Parliament. Um, and there's talk about, you know, there's about maybe 20 letters that have gone into the 1922 committee. 53 is the number they need to get over to get a vote of no confidence in him. But that he could just call an election as soon as that number hits. But they want to do it electronically so he wouldn't have time. I mean, it, the machinations of this... Um, who knows how it would work out, what the, the rules change, you know, depending on who wants to change the rules. But the reality is, I mean, whatever happens, whether the election is in June or in October or November or even next January, which it legally could wait until, no one thinks that the Tories are going to win the election. Everything now is about how badly they lose the election. How big a role does the Reform UK party play in that? A major role. Um, there was a big poll out yesterday showing that they could cost the Tories 50 seats while also not winning a single one themselves. And I think we have to remember, Julia, of course, last time, one of the reasons why Boris Johnson got a majority of 80 was partly, of course, because the Brexit party didn't stand in those southern seats which the Tories were targeting uh, already held. But the second thing, of course, you've got to remember is that the majority of 80 would have been even bigger if the, uh, the Brexit party hadn't stood in places uh, in the Red Wall area, like Yvette Cooper's seat, for instance, like Ed Miliband's seat of Doncaster North. So I think we really haven't seen yet what a potential rival party on the right wing of British politics can do, especially if those polls are accurate. It's a big if, but they're 15 to 18 points. That's how we have to wait and see how they'll do. But is there any way that Rishi Sunak can sort of bring it back? I mean, look, I'm wearing this T-shirt, this woman, adult, human, female T-shirt today. <laughs> We've got the culture wars. I'm not sure. I mean, that's a big issue for me and lots of other women, I think, but perhaps not the it's not going to be the defining issue for people who you know their heating bills have just gone down, but their council tax just gone up by 5%. We saw these astonishing figures on uh, the waiting list, the NHS, you know, 250 people dying every week are calling uh, to Royal College uh, of Emergency Medicine because they're not being seen quick enough in any people waiting a month to see their GP routinely now in many areas. And then you've got the channel migrants that we've seen, I mean, extraordinary, a record number of people coming over in the first three months, more than 5,000. I mean, these figures are, you know, everything other than inflation is going in the wrong direction for the Prime Minister. Absolutely. And I think this is the kind of self-defeating narrative uh, that we actually have, of course, which means that because they're 20 point behind the polls, everyone then stops going for those kind of 50-50 balls and attacking the opposition on things like the Rainer story. Just on your T-shirt, uh, Julia, <laughs> I would just say about the issue concerning the hate crime bill, which is, of course, that the Scottish Labour voted for it. And yeah. yet you have Pat McFadden, Labour in the UK spokesman out today, uh, suggesting that they wouldn't have voted for this in Westminster. Well, hang on a sec. <laughs> Labour is saying one thing in Scotland and doing one thing in Scotland, and yet it's saying another in Westminster. So there are concerns about the opposition too. And in terms of the big problems facing Britain, I completely agree with all your analysis so far. Uh, it's going to be very difficult for anyone, even the most gifted of politicians, to turn this around. And at the moment, Rishi Sunak, unfortunately for him, doesn't look like he is anywhere near that. Indeed. James Hill, always good to talk to you from The Spectator. Thank you. Still with me is Tom Slater. Just, uh, Do you think there's any chance Rishi Sunak can turn this around? No. Would another alternative leader be able to do that? That's the question. Depends what turn this around means. I think there yeah. there's, could be well someone who could stem the losses somewhat just by, you know, giving that kind of that honeymoon period to a new leader. But th this would be a very low bar. Yeah, so yeah, yeah next, indeed. Oh, it's going to be a busy year ahead. Coming up in the next hour, more from Tom Slater and more on the SNP's controversial new hate crime law. And Michael Gove hints at a November general election. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer and you're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. 
What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh. Oh, it's carry on. What just happened? <laughs> Whoa, listen. There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. So he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans. Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just yeah. for... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail her. We're yeah, supposed to have was moved another on from that. era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Good morning and welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer and you're with Talk TV. We're on TV, on radio, online and on your smart speaker. And I'm with you live from 10 until 1. Where have you been for the last hour? Coming up in this hour, JK Rowling has challenged police in Scotland to arrest her for stating the fact that trans women are men. The Harry Potter author tweeted, freedom of speech and belief are at an end in Scotland if the accurate description of biological sex is deemed criminal. This as she hit out at the SNP's controversial new hate crime law. And the Housing Secretary Michael Gove has entered at a November general election, but with the Tories around 20 points behind Labour in the opinion polls, long NHS waiting lists and a record level of channel boat crossings already this year, will they be able to turn their fortunes around? And after a form UK pledged to hold a referendum on net zero policies, I'll be speaking to an author who says the green policies are a threat to our national security. All that, plenty more besides. First, let's get the latest news headlines with Divya Kohli. Good morning. Three children have been injured in a school shooting in Finland. Police were called to a primary school located north of Helsinki to reports of another child opening fire on pupils. The suspect, a minor, was detained at the scene. Locals have been told to stay away from the area with an investigation underway. A British aid worker has been killed in what's reported to be an Israeli airstrike in Gaza. He's one of five volunteers for the charity World Central Kitchen who died in the attack. The others were Polish and Australian nationals. In a statement, the charity said this is a tragedy and humanitarian aid workers should never be a target ever. From Tel Aviv, journalist Yotam Confino told Talk TV it's too soon to blame the IDF. If it was Israel that was behind this, they need to be held accountable. Absolutely. But we cannot already conclude that this was an Israeli airstrike that killed uh, these people. So I think we need to first of all wait and see what the investigation is going to come up with. Meanwhile, Israel's military has pulled out of Al-Shifa hospital after a two-week raid that left it in ruins. Gaza's officials say dozens of bodies have been found. Israel claims to have killed 200 terrorists and found weapons and intelligence. The Labour Party claims conservative turmoil under Rishi Sunak has cost the taxpayer £8.2 billion and nearly a year in lost time. This morning, Labour's unveiled a website called The Cost of Chaos, which includes a bill calculating the cost of Tory by-elections, ministerial reshuffles and policy U-turns, like scrapping the northern leg of HS2. Shadow Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, Pat McFadden, told us their calculations are cautious. It adds up to billions of pounds and it won't stop because they never stop. They're already manoeuvring around Rishi Sunak now. 
uh, the leadership candidates are already plotting and if the Tories were to win the next election this kind of thing and this cost would all simply carry on. Meanwhile, Rishi Sunak says the government is delivering on its childcare plan as the first parents in England benefit from 15 hours of taxpayer-funded care for two-year-olds. The policy is the first phase of a plan to dramatically expand funded childcare for working parents. The Prime Minister says it will build a brighter future for families and help to grow our economy. But Labour says families will struggle to access places. Former Home Office advisor Claire Pearsall says nurseries now need to find ways to manage the extra places. I think we have to be really careful that you don't try and do too much too soon when you haven't got a guarantee of the places. Mm. If you speak to childcare providers, they're really concerned that they don't have the capacity to take in the funded places. So we need to ensure that we build out the capacity. Donald Trump's avoided having his assets seized after posting a $175 million bond in his civil fraud case. The former US president was at risk of having prime real estate like Trump Tower and Mar-a-Lago estate taken away from him. In February, he was found guilty of scheming to deceive banks and insurers by inflating his wealth. And breakthrough technology will be offered to tens of thousands of people in England with type 1 diabetes. The so-called artificial pancreas uses a glucose sensor under the skin to calculate how much insulin is delivered from a pump automatically. The NHS will start contacting patients to offer the new system later this month. That's the latest Weather Time Now with Isabel Lang. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. It's looking unsettled again this week with further low pressure systems coming in from the southwest. In fact, you can see this wet weather pushing in across the south through the course of today. It looks as though it'll be a miserable afternoon and evening. Ahead of that, some showers, but some bright spells. Coldest weather where we keep that persistent rain in central and eastern Scotland. And here, quite a chilly east or northeasterly wind. Elsewhere, it is quite mild, temperatures into the mid teens in places. We keep that wet weather in the northeast tonight, bit of snow for higher ground. Elsewhere, it's this low driving the rain northwards. That we're talking about some quite wet weather developing for many central areas the brighter yellow showing the heavier burst running up through wales into the midlands and then eventually up into uh, northern england really horrible actually out there in the south though it'll turn a bit drier by morning but it will be mild as you can see temperatures no lower than around 10 in the south on wednesday then we get that wet weather stuck across central areas uh, quite heavy rain and not particularly tr nice if you're traveling uh, local flooding possible as well driest across the far northwest of scotland and also in the south it should turn a bit drier through the afternoon with some brighter spells and a high of 12 to 15. <music> Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Good morning and welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer and you are with Talk TV. Lots to talk about today. Joining me right now to run through all the biggest stories is editor of Spiked Online, Tom Slater. Good morning to you Good once morning. again. Thank you for joining us. We've talked a lot about JK Rowling already. And for those who are just tuning out, I mean, seriously, where have you been? Um, and for those who are, who are watching on Delhi and the radio, it won't mean anything to you. I am wearing my one of my favourite T-shirts. It tells you what a woman is. Uh, woman or women, but plural. Noun, adult, human, female. Very, very simple. What we always used to know what a woman was but now, apparently, well, men can be women. They don't even have to have an operation. They don't even need to go any hormonal treatment. They can just put on a wig, uh, a rather badly, uh, badly uh, made dress, and say, I'm a woman. And you can often try and get yourself put into, a, I don't know, a women's prison if you've committed rape and things like that. We've seen all this play out over the recent years, and yet, as of yesterday, Scotland still thought it was a good idea under the SNP government to bring in a law backed by Labour, Lib Dems and the Greens to basically say that saying that a trans woman, i.e. a man, was not a woman and was a man, could actually be regarded as a hate crime. This is under their brand new laws. A new hate crime law, it basically criminalises people for stating biological facts. It was supposed to be aimed at uh, stopping people being hateful, causing offence, being abusive. But it goes far further than any other laws we have seen. And even if you don't find yourself being arrested and criminalised, you could find yourself with a record for a non-crime hate incident, which you may not even know has happened, because someone who just heard you say something or read a tweet that you've written uh, could decide that they were offended 
and the police can record it without even questioning you. These are extraordinary times. I think Orwellian is not too strong a word. Well, J.K. Rowling has waded in, as we would expect from the Harry Potter author, and she challenged Scottish police to arrest her over a new hate crime law, as I say, that will criminalise, in particular, calling a trans woman a man. A government uh, minister yesterday uh, from Scotland com confirmed that, yes, she could well be questioned by police for that. She basically sent out a whole series of tweets yesterday, the day the law came in, also, ironically, April Fool's Day, pointing out that actually, yes, these women that she claimed as women were not really women, they were men. And with the hashtag arrest me, challenge the police to come to her door when she returns to Scotland after her Easter holiday. I want to know, do you support her? Tell us why you do, tell us why you don't. Give us a call, 0344 499 1000. Text on 8722 or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Calls are charged at the national rate. Text costs one standard network rate message. Um, I'm very happy, Tom Slater, to share a prison cell uh, with JK <laughs> Rowling, our former guest, uh, Helen Joyce, and, and many, many others who are refusing to uh, back down on this. Um, I think you know, you've been a strong ally on this. You would be willing to do this all, but not just because it's about women's rights. This is about the right to speak truth. Absolutely. I think that's the most insidious thing about the way in which gender ideology is being enforced by this kind of woke censorship now, is that it's taking the kind of policing of speech and opinion to a whole new level. You take something like misgendering. It's not misgendering, misgendering, correctly gendering. But it's, it's compelling people to lie, not just to say things that they don't believe, but also to say things that don't comport with biological reality. That It means that to call a man a woman and vice versa. And even in court, in line a rape victim being required to say her penis and things mm -hmm. like that. It's absolutely, it's, it's, it's depraved, morally speaking, in so many different respects. But I think it's also worth remembering, as you were hinting to there, is that this hasn't come out of nowhere. It's not just the march of gender ideology. Across the UK, we have had hate speech laws for decades now. Even the, the offence within this new act of stirring up hatred has existed on the English and Welsh statute book, the UK-wide statute book, for some time. And this is the latest front in that war. It's the most insidious because of the fact that, almost uniquely, we're now in a situation where a majority opinion is being criminalised. Yeah. Previously, it was people at the extreme yes. who would have their speech criminalised. Now it's um, the average member of the public who yeah. recognises that there are two sexes. That is new, that is different, but it also, I think, is a product of failing to kind of hold the line on freedom of speech for all. And, and people talk a good game, like Rishi Sunak, um, you know, uh, um, basically, you know, as the Prime Minister saying he supports JK Rowling, the Conservatives would always protect free speech, and, and uh, it, well, well, they haven't. I mean, they haven't. Thousands of people lose their jobs. And in fact, we know, you know, we were both supporters of the Free Speech Union and, and the union acts for people all the time. And lot, millions more who, who, who've done nothing wrong. They haven't mm -hmm. gone up and abused someone or punched someone or been, you know, used, you know, horrible language towards a colleague. Or they simply stated, you know, just basic fact. Well, well I don't believe that a trans woman is a woman because, because they aren't, they're mm -hmm. a man. I mean, the, that, you know, said in that tone, you know, in the canteen or in an office meeting, in a diversity training meeting, uh, could get you the sack. Um, and this is how many people, but people who are not saying it, the millions of people who feel, I can't take the risk, I've got a mortgage, I've got rent, I've got kids to, to mm -hmm. feed, and the amount of people who are being silenced. But I, I, don't think it, I don't think this overplays it. This is what happened. You know, this is what happened in China under Mao. This is what happened uh, in, in, under Stalin as well. People forget this is what happens in, in North Korea and elsewhere. This, this sort of mind control, forcing people to state things that they know are not true, is part of how you kind of break people. Mm -hmm. It is, it's an incredibly insidious, dangerous thing to do. And, and people really need to stand firm on this. And this is not saying we should be abusive in any way to people who are genuinely trans. And I'm sorry, I don't consider people who've raped, men who've raped women who then suddenly after being charged uh, find they, oh, it turns out I'm trans, oh, give me a break. No one believes that, you know, uh, apart from the judges, it would appear. Um, but, but, you know, this is just, and this, you can still be kind and respectful, but you shouldn't be required to mm -hmm. lie. And also, it, I think we should turn this discussion on its head to a certain extent. I do not see loads of hate-filled bigotry coming from the gender no. critical, as it's called, side of this debate. When you see the outright misogyny, the viciousness, the, de the um, rape, rape and threats. death threats that come yeah. through, it's coming from one direction. It's coming from the extreme trans activists who... And who aren't necessarily trans themselves, Exactly. I mean, who are waging this war on a kind of imagined group's behalf as far as they're concerned. They might not even know any of these of these mm. people that they claim to be fighting on behalf because they have this deeply authoritarian nature and it's become a vent, actually, for a lot of men in particular's 
misogyny, I think. So it is, this isn't anti, this isn't pro-trans, it's anti-women. And again, mm. most people I know who are trans have actually said, you know, who live their lives as trans, have, have said, you know, we just don't want anything to do with this. We just want to be, you know, live our lives quietly Absolutely. And, 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 and carry on being members of society as, as they already were. Um, then let's also talk about um, where the Tories are right now. We just discussed that with James Hill from The Spectator. But I mean, more Tory plotting, we're told, about whether or not to oust the Prime Minister before the next general election, so after May the 2nd of the local elections, so one month today, looking on the polls to be very bad, either people voting Labour instead of Tory or Reform UK, we know uh, they're garnering support more and more from Tory voters, or just simply sitting at home. Mm -hmm. But whether or not ousting the Prime Minister after that will actually help Tory fortunes is the big question. No, absolutely. And it's just, I think they're waking up to the fact that there are no good options at this yeah. point. Um, it's been that way for a while, but still they're talking about, you know, what about the local elections coming up? Not least because of the fact that if they lose a load of Tory councillors, that seems pretty nailed on at this point. That is a large portion of their campaigning sort of apparatus. So people they're forget that the, the people who go out and do the leafleting, mm -hmm. the people who actually, you know, are out and about, they'll be all sort of, you know, miserable. They're not going to go out campaigning mm -hmm. the next day ahead of a, another, another election. Especially if they've just lost their council seats, they won't want to go out and campaign in the general election yeah. necessarily. They're quite understandably going to be quite cheesed off about this situation. So as I say, there's no good options, really. Um, what would you do? Feel... What would you do if, I mean, if, and it was a big if, if you wanted the Tories to survive, mm. is there anything they could do? Is there an alternative leader? Is there a policy? Because is it is it down to, like, if there's more chaos of a Tory leadership contest, that will actually put voters off even more? Or is it that people feel like, well, Rishi Sunak can't, you know, can't, he's not, he can't be the leader that people would vote for? Mm -hmm. or, or is it about if he just came up with some policies? If he... I think he talks the talk on loads of good stuff, yeah. but he doesn't actually put it into action. I mean, it's not entirely obvious to me that the Tories have a sort of right to survive at this point, given how much they've screwed up. But I, the one thing I would say is that he, Rishi Sunak had some sense of the issues that could really be a genuine dividing line with Labour and also are genuinely important issues. Net zero, gender ideology. There are, there are a few of these things which he could, if he wanted to, even cynically, really kind of lean into them, that would have yeah. had some sort of impact because it would have forced the Labour Party to justify the unjustifiable in terms yeah. of national self-impoverishment with net zero, in terms of gender ideology. The problem is, is that he's still incredibly cautious. Yeah. He's still He wants people to, he wants to be a nice person. So you and have to still, have the nice views of the nice people. Exactly, and he still wants to be invited to the right dinner party, so to speak. So, and also he's reckoning with the fact that a lot of these policies, if you talk about gender self-ID, which thankfully was never actually introduced in this country, if you talk about net zero, these are Tory policies, which a lot of Tory MPs still very much believe in. Mm. So it's very difficult for him to kind of wage a war on woke when that would involve waging war on yeah. half of his own parliamentary party. Yeah, right? absolutely. It's going to be fascinating, it really is, over the next uh, uh, few weeks and months. Let's talk about what's happening abroad, because that's also impacting what's going on here uh, uh, with Gaza, of course. And in the news this morning that seven aid workers, including a Brit and an Australian, have been killed by, it is believed to be by the IDF, mm -hmm. uh, by an IDF bomb. Again, IDF, uh, the Israeli Defence Forces, so they are investigating, uh, and uh, we don't know for sure. And again, we don't want to be in a situation as we had previously where claims that it was the IDF, when in fact you know, it's not been them responsible. It would be bizarre if they had targeted these aid workers. Uh, it's believed these are the first foreign aid workers uh, to have uh, been killed. Uh, we've had a statement from the Foreign Secretary, David Cameron, while we've been on air. He uh, put on X the statement, British nationals are reported to have been killed. We are urgently working to verify this information and will provide full support to their families. So it looks like more than one. Um, it is essential that humanitarian workers are protected and able to carry out their work. We have called on Israel to immediately investigate and provide a full, transparent explanation of what happened. Um, this is going to put a lot more pressure on Western governments over their support for Israel, isn't it? It is. And it's one of those situations where, given our experience in the past few months, that it's always important to allow the dust to settle for investigations to take place. And I don't necessarily just mean the IDF marking their own homework time for journalists to examine all of the kind of information that they have at their disposal to work out precisely Maybe, what maybe not the BBC fact-checkers, though. Exactly. They might so uh, track record. Maybe they can always. just call on, you know, That's the right. leaders of Hamas to verify everything <laughs> like they normally do. So it is, it is important that we um, allow all those kind of facts to be established. But as you say, it seems incredibly unlikely that this was a deliberate thing, if that is indeed what's taking place here. But I think the problem is it then will get folded into that 
narrative online very quickly that, of course, it was deliberate. They're just mindlessly bloodthirsty. Yeah. This is what they do. So as ever, there's there's fog of war, but, which, but particularly so in a situation where you have so much kind of propaganda flying yeah. around about you. Indeed, and we've also got to the Al-Shifa Hospital and IDF forces mm -hmm. withdrawing from there after two weeks, the biggest hospital complex, I mean, huge big complex. And if you're, just, if you're watching, you can see, I mean, it's just the absolute devastation of that complex by the IDF. They say they've been there two weeks, basically getting rid of uh, uh, Hamas fighters. There's still the ongoing issue, isn't there, uh, about Rafa and whether or not there's going to be the assault on mm -hmm. Rafa, you know, proper, uh, to, which is the final stronghold of Hamas fighters. But again, it is still extraordinary to me when you had you know, last week this United Nations uh, uh, vote. And again, I was amazed it was supported by Britain and America, uh, where they didn't veto this, this vote, you're know, calling on the ceasefire. You know, it, the pressure always seems to be on Israel. Israel's got a ceasefire. Mm -hmm. Where is the pressure? They'll, they'll, they'll state it, but no one bothers talking about it. The, the, Hamas, the first thing the Hamas need to do is release all of the hostages they still hold, more than 130 still believed to be held by them, and down their weapons. But everyone seems to talk about Israel. Israel has to act. Hamas could act today. Mm -hmm. They don't need Israel to act first. Then the pressure would be on Israel to stop. But Hamas won't. And no one seems to be calling on Hamas to do that. Absolutely. And I find that kind of shift quite distinctly in recent weeks, yeah. where the West is getting nervous about supporting Israel. I found that really disconcerting because of the fact that people forget how this conflict started. I mean, this was... Oh, no, no, you have to go back 2,000 years, don't you? I mean, come on. If we're talking about what the right context is, surely yeah. the first assault in this war and this genocidal attack on southern Israel, the rape and murder of innocent people, the targeting of... This is what gen October 7th is genuinely what targeting civilians looks like in the most depraved fashion. And you've got a Western-style liberal democracy standing up for itself yeah. against a would-be genocidal threat. The only thing yeah. stopping Hamas from doing that on a much bigger scale yeah. is the weaponry that they have at their disposal. Absolutely. People need to remember that. I know, and I, I think people really do do forget it, don't they? And um, I, I'm always fascinated the conversations I have with people, I mean, because sort of plastic gets these conversations over, you know, in the pub over a pint. Um, you know, what is a proportionate response? They would say, this isn't a proportionate response. I would say, well, what is it? What is a proportionate response? OK, they killed 1,200 Jews. Mm -hmm. Oh, OK, well, 1,200 and one, that's disproportionate, but 1,200 would be OK. That's not how war works. And again, a lot of question marks being raised now about the Hamas-supplied health ministry figures from Gaza, about mm -hmm. how many people have died who are civilian, and particularly the women and children. And the idea that it's 70% women and children who have died, and there's just simply no verification of these figures at all whatsoever. And it's highly unlikely that it would be the case. And yet it's all spouted and all accepted uh, by the mainstream media. Um, no doubt we'll be talking more about that for many months to come. In fact, this weekend is the six-month anniversary of that October 7th attack. It is extraordinary, um, uh, uh, you know, how, how long that has gone on now. Let's also talk just very briefly about the Princess of Wales. That video announcement, uh, it's before I went on holiday, detailing her cancer treatment sitting on a bench. I mean, the conspiracy theories continued about that. Mm -hmm. Was it AI? What was it? She didn't. She blinked too much, or she didn't blink enough, or whatever it was. Um, but that was rushed out by Kensington Palace after her diagnosis had been leaked, and we heard about how um, two two members of staff had been. Uh, disciplined uh, at the hospital where she'd been treated for trying to access her records. It wasn't made clear whether they had accessed her records or not. There were certainly an awful lot of rumours going on about what her health treatment was. Um, I certainly heard some, some from what I thought were pretty reliable sources. Again, it's not my place to, 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 to put, put those out on, on, on air and did not. Um, but, but basically, she didn't do it to quell all these rumours. It was just that they knew the information about her health treatment had got out and they wanted to get ahead of it. I mean, this is... I, I think Palace has handled this terribly, mm. personally. Um, I think they were always unrealistic to expect that people would last that long. I mean, I'm, I'm perfectly happy not to know information about her illness or, or see pictures of her. I think it's seen that people who claim to be royal fans were demanding that. Mm -hmm. um, they're the people, I think, who are the most obscene. But, but the whole thing is, is absolutely foul that people would be leaking that information and going to publish it, and they mm -hmm. had to get ahead of that. This is such private information. Absolutely. And it's something that, especially if you're talking about people working in that London clinic um, who are charged with the privacy. I mean, that's yeah. how it sells itself to the, royal, to the royals and others, which is the, the fact that they can kind of throw an iron ring around their treatment and uh, make sure that news of that doesn't get out. But I think it is one of those difficulties that we've run into with the Kate Middleton story from the off, is that you have, on the one hand, the royals who are used to having a slightly more kind of arm's length relationship with the press where they can kind of try and get on top of stories and um, stop yeah. ones that they wanted to get on top of and so on. Uh, but at the same time, in this current age, there is going to be interest. There isn't always going to be that level of deference. Her 
her well-being as a matter of constitutional significance. Yeah. And so as a consequence of that, the, it's, uh, I think there's, there may be an element of naivety as to how much that's, they can I, control That's what I thought. I thought it was rather said. unrealistic. Can we talk about something which is a, well, rather less important than a young mum's health? Um, but um, it seems to be of great importance to a lot of people. Front page of The Sun today uh, about the new Team GB flag, sort of the, the sort of flag that you can buy as a supporter, as the head of the Golf Club, got the Euros in Germany in June. And then in July, after that, we've got the Paris uh, Summer Olympics. And this new flag, and I'll describe it to you if you've not seen it. I mean, lucky you if you've not seen it, frankly. Um, you know, we've got this really amazing, iconic flag with red, white and blue. Well, no, we haven't anymore, apparently. Uh, it's, uh, it's various different shades of blue, pale blue, dark blue, navy blue, mid, mid blue. And then it's pink and purple. It's got dots and stripes and squiggles and... It's just horrible. It's, I mean, it's, it's basically, it's a, someone, someone has sat on their computer and, <laughs> and frankly, I had a few too many tipples at lunchtime before they did this. It's a horrible. They said they wanted to update the design because they wanted to give it a, div again, that word, diverse. Mm. It's like they thought it was a bit too, it wasn't very iconic, the black, because there's the red, white and blue. Apparently mm. other countries use that too. Tom? I mean, more than anything else for me, these redesigns are just naff and bad. Like, if your idea yeah. is to update it, improve upon it, whatever, then they're not doing a particularly good, good job. And also, it's always this argument, isn't it? Oh, it's to better reflect the country oh. and so on. So How does it's pink better reflect the country? Yeah, the, the, the nation's flag surely is one that anyone should be able to stand underneath if you really want it to be inclusive about our national... Tradition as but well. basically, the people doing this, it, they right? hate our flag. They hate the England flag for the football. They hate the uh, uh, the, the Union flag uh, for the Olympics mm. because they just think they think oh, it's just a bit racist and and you know you know empire and all of that because they don't actually like their country. These people need to be reminded. You know, the British Empire ended a very long time ago. <laughs> I mean, they, anyway, seriously, guys, move <laughs> on. Also, by the way, if you were going to be colonised, the British Empire was probably your best bet compared to the others. You travel around the world, you'll, you'll be able to see that. Just fine, I've got to talk about the Germans. So I love that they're having issues as well. This is the new German kit um, uh, for the Euros. Um, and Adidas has said they're going to have to block Germany's football kits um, being sold to fans featuring the number 44 over concerns that it resembles the SS symbol of the Nazis. These are, of course, the, the horrific you know, the stormtroopers who, uh, who carried out some of those heinous crimes under the Nazi era. And it does really look like that. I have to say the four just doesn't look like a four, which is what yeah. most bothers me. But I'm quite amused that other countries get into a tiz over these things too. It seems to be a growing issue, doesn't it, the politics of sports kits. Um, another yeah. front in the cultural war, which no doubt will provide us plenty of... But, yeah, but we're the ones <laughs> stirring it up, apparently. But, again, like, so it's not just us that it happens to. Anyway, Tom Slater, thank you very much. Right, let's get to your views now. We are asking about the JK Rowling. She's challenged Scott Scottish police to arrest her over a new hate crime law that criminalises calling a trans woman a man. Do you support her? And tell us why you do, tell us why you don't. I particularly would love to hear from you if you don't agree with her. Give us a call on 0344 499 1000. Text 87222. Get in touch on X at Talk TV. Joanne says, uh, is it, uh, could be Joanne Rowling, could be JK, could, could be. Joanne says, keep fighting the good fight, JK. Honesty is what these people need to hear rather than validation of delusions. Heather says, this law is ludicrous. Calling a woman a man or a man a woman, some people need to get back to school again to learn basics. And Jeff says, as someone who identifies as a person above the law, I don't have these problems. I like that. Uh, you've also been getting in touch on the phones. Keep those calls coming in. Let's go to Liz, who is in Weymouth. Hello, Liz. Hello, Liz. Can you hear me, my love? Liz, Liz, Liz. Liz, she, oh, we've just lost the line. I know, I know what she wanted to say. She, uh, she uh, had said, said, why are there no urinals in the ladies' toilets, she wanted to say. Well, why not? Yes, because, because funnily enough, women, women, well, mostly, I have seen women trying to stand up and pee. Doesn't tend to work out that well. But it's interesting, isn't it, the reaction we're getting, I mean, very predictable, because yeah. sane people who watch and listen to this show will have sane views. But it is extraordinary how many people among the great and the good, the yeah. politicians, uh, in the media, you know, we, 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 God, we had Justin Webb on today programme on Radio 4 being formally disciplined for referring to a trans woman, i.e. a male, he said. I mean, he's got formally disciplined for that. It's crazy, and it's a reminder that this isn't just about people who watch talk TV or read Spikes or who, are, uh, you know, have a firm and established position on these issues. This is one thing that the BBC, the Labour Party, even the SNP have never really grasped, is the fact that even their own viewers, members, yeah. supporters, are not on board with this agenda at all. And I think that's... It's so overwhelming now and it's so clear that whilst the elites have gone absolutely mad on this issue, the public are 
A, beginning to wake up to it and B, becoming much more assertive in yeah. pushing back. And They've had I, enough. I'm just hoping that that's going to... Absolutely. Come to well, we'll talk to Labour's ways. Rosie Duffield, who's had an extraordinary time in Labour over her, again, expressing the views of the vast majority of people in this country. Coming up after the break, uh, Michael Gove has hinted at a November general election. Can we wait that long? With Labour... Uh, uh, sorry, with the Conservatives way behind in the polls. Long NHS waiting list and record levels of channel boat crossings. I want to know, though, will Tories be able to turn their fortunes around? We'll talk to former Cabinet Minister Peter Lilly. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer and you're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to happen and eave it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of Cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting the badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> there was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know what's, I know what's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you? But laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family, and if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. We're supposed to, her. We're supposed to was have another moved on from era. that. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer, and you are with Talk TV. Now, the Housing Secretary, Michael Gove, has hinted at a November general election, but with the Tories around 20 points behind Labour in most opinion polls, long NHS waiting lists, and a record level of channel boat crossings already this year, will they actually be able to turn their fortunes around, even with months to go? Well, joining me right now to discuss this is former Deputy Leader of the Conservative Party, uh, Lord Peter Lilly. Uh, good morning to you, Lord Lilly. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Oh, also, of course, Tom Slater's still in the studio. Um, Lord Lily, I mean, look, the, the poll, there hasn't been a good poll for the Tories for a very long time, but some of them are worse than others, particularly the threat from Reform UK, that even though they may never get a single seat, they could actually stop the Tories winning a load of them. Is there any argument, do you think, to go sooner rather than later or later rather than sooner? Or do you think waiting to November at least gives the opportunity for something to change? Well, there's a little-known rule of the British Constitution that no government ever calls an election until the first Thursday in the fifth year, fourth year, 
where they're ahead in the polls. And as we aren't likely to be ahead in the polls in, for November, they'll put it off until November. No government's going to, uh, you know, Turkeys don't vote for Christmas and governments don't vote for elections when they're 20 points behind in the polls. So it just won't happen, whatever the rights and wrongs of it are. Well, the, the argument, I suppose, is, you know, look, some, again, something might happen, events, tip or events, um, uh, but also cost of living crisis will be easing. However, we've got the channel migrant crisis that, crisis that doesn't appear to be easing with that record number 5,000 people uh, coming across in the first three months of this year. Of course, stop the boats was one of the five uh, pledges that Rishi Sunak asked to be judged on as it, from his premiership. Um, we saw, you know, it's, it's not, I mean, it was roughly 1,300 more than it had been uh, a year ago. That doesn't bode well for the summer. Um, and also, of course, NHS waiting lists. More and more figures coming out over the weekend saying, you know, people waiting, reports today, up to a month for a GP appointment. And, uh, and 250 people dying every week across hospitals in this country because they're waiting too long in A&E. Um, is there anything that you could point to that could be a game changer for the Conservatives in the polls? No, not really. Uh, that doesn't mean to say that I think everything is lost. But yeah, when you're in this position, the sensible thing is to map out uh, well, certainly the electorate aren't going to thank you for anything you do. They're only going to vote you back if they're convinced that in future you'll be better than the other lot. <laughs> and so we've got to spell out the things we are doing, show we're doing them, and show what more we need, we'll need to do in the next parliament. And there's an awful lot. That's slightly difficult because that will mean undoing some things we've allowed to happen in the last parliament, above all, yeah. the huge level of legal migration, which has just got to be brought down back towards balance uh, but they've got to tackle the boats not to win elections but because it's the right thing to stop people coming illegally imposing huge burdens on our public expenditure and uh, hotels and accommodation which otherwise would be available for people born and bred here who are in need uh, so there are, we should be doing things because they're the right thing to do not because we imagine there's some tactical way of winning an election if people think you're only doing things for tactical reasons, they will discount it. If they can see you're doing them because you believe them and because you've got fire in your belly about them, then they may carry conviction. Mrs. Thatcher used to say, uh, you can only carry conviction if you've got conviction. Yes. I think Rishi has got convictions, but he's not very good at expressing them. Well, the trouble he can is express he... them with more fire. He, well, he does no, but he will express conviction and then and then he sort of backtracks because all oh, you know some some people don't like it one of the things about margaret thatcher was that she didn't care whether people liked her or not she did what she believed people might disagree with it what she believed was the right thing and that's a very different way of governing than sort of looking at the latest focus group and the latest opinion poll or oh, what do they think or oh, I'll, I'll backtrack on net zero a bit or oh, i didn't go up in the polls so much and they didn't like it, so I'll backtrack again. That's the sort of wishy-washiness that an awful lot of voters are saying, well, what's the point of the Conservatives? The thing I hear from people again and again and again in the political world and an awful lot of people outside the political world, I'm one of those strange people in working in the political world who doesn't have many friends in it. I try to my friends are largely in the normal world. Um, and, uh, and, 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 they, and they always say to me, you know, the thing is, they said, what's the difference? Even if we don't think we want a Labour government, we don't think it's going to be any different to what we've got under the Conservatives because we've basically got a Labour government now. They talk the talk, but when it comes to walking the walk on, you know, the trans issue, on the, you know, hate crime incidents, on uh, on, on net zero, on 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 taxes, on, on pretty much everything, you may as well have a Labour government, they say. Well, the, the Labour Party is positioning itself as saying the Tory government's awful and we're going to do the same things which would be a reason for staying at home, not voting for Labour if you believed them. But actually, of course, we know that they aren't really in their hearts committed doing the same things as the Tories, however inadequately, are trying to do. They are much more woke. They are much more high spending, high borrowing, high taxation in their hearts than the Tories are. Tories may be spending too much, taxing too much, borrowing too much, but Labour would clearly be worse on all those fronts. It would be worse... Uh, on standing up for Britain and making our own rules rather than accepting those uh, we've inherited from others or we have to take under you know, international conventions and so on. 
So um, I can't see any reason for voting Labour. I can see when I try and be biased, unbiased and balanced and forget that I'm a Conservative, some reasons for staying at home, but I can't see any reason for voting Labour. <laughs> that's, that's very interesting. Can I also ask you about a, a Labour think tank? Uh, this is Labour Together. They've been described as crucial to Keir Starmer's vision for government. I think sort of playing the same role that sort of the IPPR played uh, for Tony Blair. Um, they are basically urging Starmer to give default British citizenship to the 3.7 million EU citizens granted settled status in the UK after Brexit. Of course, lots of people were told your Brexiteers were basically saying, you know, we're going to make everyone go home and deport everyone. No, no, if you'd lived here for a certain number of years, came in under the EU, you had a right not just to stay, but a right uh, to get uh, automatic, basically uh, default, you know, settled status. They're saying to go further and to move to actually give people citizenship. Uh, to say to assuage fears among Britons about migrants failing to contribute to the economy. Now, I do wonder whether part of the aim of this would actually be about a future EU referendum, because of course there was a big fuss from the Remainers back in 2016 that EU citizens weren't allowed to vote. You had to be a British citizen, quite rightly, to vote on in the EU referendum. But if these people were made British citizens, that would probably be more than enough to swing the vote the Remainers way. Um, what do you make of this uh, proposal? Well, it is an incredibly cynical way of trying to manipulate the electorate to um, weight it more in favour of both Remain, but also they think they'd be more likely to vote Labour uh, and not vote Conservative. Uh, and uh, we have rules about who can vote. You have to be, and how you can become a citizen. To change those rules in that cynical way would be uh, an extraordinary thing to do. And actually, that is a very good reason for not voting Labour and for voting Conservative. You don't want to see the electorate manipulated, um, bringing millions of people in, giving them the vote because you think they may vote for you. Yeah, indeed. Uh, Peter Lilly, Lord Lilly, the former deputy of the Conservative Party, thank you so much for joining us. Let me bring back in Tom Slater, uh, who is uh, the editor of Spiked Online, has joined us all morning. Um, Tom, I mean, that, it is incredibly cynical, isn't it, the idea that you give people citizenship. There's a very big difference between being welcoming of people coming here to make a new life and contribute mm -hmm. and improve their own lives um, and saying, yes, you can be a citizen of this country. Th those, aren't, those aren't the same thing. They're not, and I think everyone understands that. It's a process one go through to become a citizen of a country that they've chosen to join. And also people can see through how cynical and manipulative this is. I mean, Labour seems to be interested in messing with the franchise in all kinds of different directions. They want to give it to 16-year-olds, even yeah. though they don't want them to be... You know, it, it, someone voting before they're able to legally purchase alcohol is yeah. an absurd state of affairs. But they're willing to do it, not because they've got any, you know, clear, rational reason as to why those two things should, should marry up. It's because of the fact that they think and they have some reason to think that those people might vote for them. So I think people can see through all of it's, this. It's it sort is of gerrymandering they would, they would accuse you know, the Republicans in America of, Absolutely. isn't it, really? So yeah. blatant. It, it, that's the thing, it is so blatant, isn't it? Can I also just come to some breaking news we've just had in the last couple of moments, and this is uh, the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak. We had a statement a little bit earlier from David Cameron, the uh, Foreign Secretary, uh, about uh, the, uh, the death of seven aid workers, foreign aid workers in Gaza, uh, ostensibly killed, it believed, by an IDF uh, bomb. Um, uh, we, he, certainly David Cameron mentioned two, uh, well, more than, more than one uh, Britain, Britons. Uh, Prime Minister Rishi Snack has said the government has asked Israel to investigate what happened urgently. Uh, he said, uh, our view is long-standing that Israel has both the intention and the ability to comply with international humanitarian law. I've made that very clear to Prime Minister Netanyahu whenever I've spoken to him. There have been too many civilian deaths in Gaza. Of course, we want to see an immediate humanitarian pause so that we can get the hostages out and more aid into the region. Um, but again, it is fascinating. You know, we know that Hamas do use um, uh, civilians um, as as a human shield. We know that. That's why we've seen um, IDF forces going into hospitals and schools and nurseries and apartment buildings and the like. But we also do know that the IDF. I mean, this is very well documented. They go to more extensive efforts to avoid civilian deaths than pretty much any other mm -hmm. military in the world, including the Brits. Um, in terms of leafleting, dropping, you know, speakers, warning that this is going to be under attack, asking people to evacuate. And it seems like they're damned if they do, they're damned if they don't. Mm -hmm. There are going to be innocent people, including aid workers, killed in war. Bombs go astray, missiles go astray, uh, uh, or, or, you know, or, or you know, people are targeted 
you know, wrongly. Mm -hmm. This is going to happen. And yet we hold Israel to an account of a much higher level than we hold any other country. Absolutely. And it's not to say that, of course, when incidents like this happen, that the people involved, there shouldn't be an investigation, people shouldn't be held to account if there was mm. an element of, as you say, horrendous mistakes taking place or potentially worse. I don't think this is something that was conscious in this particular case. But it is fascinating that particularly when you're in a situation where they're up against an enemy who go out of their way in the opposite direction to put civilians in harm's way, that people still hold Israel to such a... Yeah. Horrendous. Standard. I mean, it's, it's awful it that these people have died. It's, it's appalling, and you know, and and anyone involved responsible should be held to account if it was deliberate or or, or careless. But mm -hmm. that's very different, would you say, from the deliberate efforts uh, to, to put those people in harm's way. Thank you very much, uh, Tom Slater. Now, don't forget, we're asking you today about J.K. Rowling, who's challenged Scottish police to arrest her over a new hate crime law that came into force yesterday that criminalises calling a trans woman a man, among many other things. Uh, do you support her and why? Give us a call, 0344 499 1000, text 8722, or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Cindy's done just that and says, I'm ashamed to have voted for the SNP. I certainly will never vote for them again. Yeah, well, the Labour and Lib Dem the Greens supported this. Uh, and again, the Tories haven't done anything to stop this. That's my argument. Uh, Dave says, hate is a feeling, so it doesn't make logical sense to arrest someone for it. And Sarah says, yes, of course I support JK. She's speaking the truth and biological facts. I live in reality, not fantasy. You've also been getting in touch on the phones. Please do keep those calls coming in. I honestly, I really want to hear from you if you disagree with JK. Uh, but let's go to Greg, who is in Edinburgh. Hello, Greg. Uh, hello, Julia. Hello. Good morning to you. Thanks so much for joining us. So I've got lots of calls from Scotland today. It makes sense, doesn't it? What do you make of what JK's done? Well, we're all living in fear, <laughs> in case we say something naughty on the radio. <laughs> uh, but uh, no, I, I, I support JK Rowling 100%. I think she's a, a champion, a real champion for free yeah. speech and for truth and reality and all of the above and, you know, all power to her. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's the thing. She could have had an easy life, you know, she could have just kept quiet, but I feel like she's more and more riled. Some mornings I just check on her feeling, think, oh, JK's on one today, great. <laughs> well, good on her, because she's got the money to stand up to people. Uh, yeah. And I, 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 I genuinely believe she believes in what she's saying, but yeah. she's got less reason to fear than the Joe public. Yeah. But then, but my point I made was that uh, we've got this law that they've just brought in that came in uh, on the 1st of April, but we've also got the UK government uh, considering uh, fining homeless people for being smelly yeah. and for being a nuisance yeah. and possibly giving them a fine of £2,000 or going to jail for being homeless. Yeah. And my point was, it's across the political spectrum, up here, down in London, politicians, and the chap rightly pointed out that this law up here was supported by... Labour. It was supported by the Lib Dems. It was even supported by a couple of Tories in the Scottish Parliament. Mm. But right across the UK, the political class is off their head. Yeah. They just are completely detached from common sense and reality. And yeah. it's just so dispiriting. Yeah, I, know. I think you've nailed it there. Thank you so much, Greg, in Edinburgh. Coming up after the break, after Reform UK pledged to hold a referendum on net zero policies, I'll be speaking to an author who says those policies are a threat to our national security. I'm Julia Hartley-Brewer and you're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, Oi, oi, treat go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry 
has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss him. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on mm. the fourth plinth. Mr. Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I know it's I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. We're yeah, supposed it was another era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place uh, where you get the truth. Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer and you're with Talk TV. Now, Reform UK have pledged to hold a referendum on net zero policies. Uh, the only thing is, of course, they'd have to be in power to be able to do that. But will that pressure other parties to offer that? To talk about this in more detail, I'm joined by author Ross Clark. He says that green policies are not just a threat to our economy, they're a threat to our national security. Good morning to you, Ross. Good morning, Julia. Thank you very much indeed. Now, you know, I'm a huge fan of your book, Not Zero, and you've updated it, and it's now Not Zero, how an irrational target will impoverish you, help China, and won't even save the planet. And it, and it won't, of course. But helping China is not just economically. Um, there are some very big issues with net zero that not just infect, affect us, you know, in terms of making our country poorer, they also impact our ability to secure our country. Well, yes, I mean, this. the point I made in the book was also made by um, Energy Secretary Claire Coutinho a couple of days ago, who said that, um, well, she's speaking specifically about Labour's policy of um, decarbonising the grid by um, 2030, and um, said quite rightly that it would make us hugely reliant on China for um, the cables, the um, electric panels, the, the solar panels, the... Uh, you know, other infrastructure that would be needed to get anywhere near that target. And um, she, she's quite right about that because um, we are already losing huge amounts of our manufacturing industry to China, and not least because energy prices are so high in Britain. Um, you know, if you're trying to manufacture things in Britain, you're already paying uh, four or five times as much for your electricity and gas as you would in the US, for example. And, um, and what you know, a surprise! This is China's energy result of green energy policy. Indeed, China, China's energy costs, of course, although they are, everyone, everyone, I love it when the Greens come on and tell me. But they're building, you know, they, they, they've got the most solar panels, the most uh, wind turbines, and that. Yes, they're also building coal-fired power stations, yeah. uh, which they're getting cheap energy. But what, I, it's interesting. The energy secretary, Claire Coutinho, who's I've got a lot of time for. However, you know, rubbishing Labour's policy. Oh, you can't possibly decarbonise the electricity grid. By the way, only 20% of our energy, not 100% of it, by 2030. What absurd idea that is. But, but the Conservatives are still pledged to decarbonise by 2035. That's equally absurd, isn't it? Well, exactly. Um, why Claire Coutinho thinks it'll be much different with the Tories' policy of decarbonising decarbonising the grid by 2035, I can't work out, because um, she seems to be sort of relying on some massive... Um, 
technological breakthrough between 2030 and 2035 or some massive turnaround for the uh, UK manufacturing industry, which would allow us to undercut China and so on. But and I just can't see where that's going to come from. I mean, you know, 2035 gives us a, you know, extra five years breathing space, but still means we would run up against this cliff edge of where we're uh, lumbering um, manufacturing industry with all these extra costs and China isn't because as you say China as well as building um, a lot of renewable energy is also building new car new coal plants they have made an absolute priority as has the US by the way of national energy security and that's what we are lacking in Britain still even though it's in uh, Claire Coutinho's title she is the Secretary of State for energy security and yeah. net zero but well, I'm here I've, I've, I've more always about the said, and the former. As I've always said to the, the Secretary of State with that job title you know it's one or the other it's not both it's an or not an and but this is a crucial thing look, America look they, they talk a good game Joe Biden talks a good game on all of these green policies but actually they are very energy secure huge huge exporter of, uh, of of oil and gas as well um, and so even when we've, we've been facing these battles in Europe with getting liquefied natural gas to replace Russia's gas oh no problem you know America's been making a fortune selling it to us but this is the thing isn't it we are we're almost getting to be like alone in the world continuing to push these policies against the actual reality and we're doing so at a time when People are poorer. People need energy that is affordable for every aspect of our lives. Massive impact on the cost of living, as we know, since the Ukraine war. But also for security. We are facing the threat from Russia, from what's going on in the Middle East, uh, from, from China uh, as well, whether it's uh, to, on Taiwan or whether it's uh, you know, cyber threats and others. We are, we are not in a position where we can secure our borders, secure our, our ability to, to, you know, to be self-sufficient in the event of some devastating impact of, of war. Um, it's almost like we're sleepwalking into this. We're not even going to be able to manufacture our own steel in a few years' time. No, well, it's only, I mean, Joe Biden is seen as the good guy, isn't he? Because he passed the Inflation Reduction Act, which bungs loads of, uh, um, you know, subsidies and so on at US companies and consumers, so long that is the, the um, Buy American made. Um, electric cars and other goods. Um, but, you know, you look at US energy policy and their absolute priority of energy security, they've increased their gas and oil output has never been higher. They're still using coal. And, um, you know, thank God they have increased their gas output because um, through shale gas, it has to be said, because that's what we are importing now in place of uh, Russian gas. We used to import a lot of gas that's piped through the uh, European supply, which ultimately uh, came from Russia. Um, we replaced that with uh, um, gas um, imported by ship um, from the US and from Qatar. And uh, if it wasn't for the US, it's energy policy, we really would be in problem now because, um, you know, we've sort of allowed our own fossil fuel industries and North Sea to, disappear, you know, run, run them down a bit. Um, we, we've refused to exploit our own shale gas um, reserves, which could be producing large quantities of energy for us now. Um, and, and we've, you know, ended up reliant on the US yeah. instead of I know. Russia It is, now, it is so. extraordinary. And yet then they say, oh, we'll criticise Labour when the Tories are doing exactly the same. Ross Clark, always such a pleasure. Thank you very much. I mean, yeah, I'm doing a lot of this on the show today, talking facts. Tom Slater still with me from Spiked Online. I mean, going back to Reform UK, the idea mm. of a referendum on net zero. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is a major issue that massively impoverishes this country, massive <clears> change in everything. And yet no one asked us. In fact, MPs didn't even bother voting, did they? They just mm. waved it through. Absolutely. It was something that there wasn't even a proper debate. They just all slapped each other on the back, not even many people in the chamber at the time, and signed this charter for national self-impoverishment into law. I think absolutely the people need to have some sort yeah. of say over this. A referendum would be fantastic. It's unlikely we're going to get it, but any pressure we can any put Any pressure, exactly. Again, people always start, we're all told, oh, no, people do agree with all these policies until they actually have faced them. And then each time they go, oh, no, I don't think so. Uh, Tom Sater, thank you so much uh, for joining us. Uh, more from you in the next hour. And coming up, I'll be speaking also to Labour MP Rosie Duffield about the SNP's controversial new hate crime laws and 250 people dying every week because of long waiting times in A&E. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer. You're with Talk TV.
A very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Oi, right, oi, oi, treat girl. When J.K. Rowling says, let's just be honest, that's all she's saying, let's just be honest, when a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman is not a woman. Trans woman is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right too. Yay. Quite Yay. right too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get. This. <laughs> but 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 I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight-pound Nokia, reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I was just about to do it. Ooh! Ooh! It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <miss it. laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth plinth. Mr Khan apparently wasn't <laughs> too keen on that. I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. <laughs> wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, a trans sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> <you've got> <laughs> Yeah. For... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family, and if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist we're, we're, we're did fail to, her. Yeah, we're supposed to have moved on from that. Era. She was 22, mm. we're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. On TV, on radio, and on your smartphone, this is Talk TV. Good afternoon and welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer. You're with Talk TV. We're on TV, on radio, online and on your smart speaker. And I'm with you live from 10 until 1. Coming up in this hour, J.K. Rowling has challenged police in Scotland to arrest her for stating the fact, not a belief, folks, it's a fact, that trans women are men. Harry Potter author tweeted, Speed, freedom of speech and belief are at an end in Scotland if the accurate description of biological sex is deemed criminal. As she hit out at the SNP's controversial new hate crime law. I'll be speaking to Labour MP Rosie Duffield up next. She's a woman, of course, who knows firsthand about the aggression of some trans campaigners. And a British national and six other aid workers have been killed in a suspected Israeli strike in Gaza. The charity World Central Kitchen called the attack unforgivable as the Israeli military said it is carrying out an in depth examination to understand the circumstances of this tragic incident. And 250 people a week are dying needlessly because of long waiting lists in A&E. That's according to Royal College of Emergency Medicine, with others waiting a whole month to see a GP. We'll talk about all of that. First, though, let's get the latest news headlines with Divya Kony. Good afternoon. One child has died and two others have been injured in a school shooting in Finland. Police were called to a primary school located north of Helsinki to reports of another child opening fire on pupils. The suspect, a minor, was detained at the scene. Locals have been told to stay away from the area with an investigation underway.
A British aid worker has been killed in what's reported to be an Israeli airstrike in Gaza. He's one of five volunteers for the charity World Central Kitchen who died in the attack. The others were Polish and Australian nationals. In a statement, the charity said humanitarian aid workers should never be a target, ever. From Jerusalem, hostage negotiator Gershon Baskin told Talk TV it's a huge tragedy. I think in any case, in any place in the world when aid workers are killed, it, it is very serious. The Israelis really need to conduct an investigation to find out how this was allowed to happen and certainly needs to take responsibility for it. Meanwhile, Israel's military has pulled out of Al-Shifa hospital after a two-week raid that left it in ruins. Gaza's officials say dozens of bodies have been found. Israel claims to have killed 200 terrorists and found weapons and intelligence. The Labour Party claims conservative turmoil under Rishi Sunak has cost the taxpayer £8.2 billion and nearly a year in lost time. Labour's unveiled a website called The Cost of Chaos, which includes a bill calculating the cost of Tory by-elections, ministerial reshuffles and policy U-turns, like scrapping the northern leg of HS2. Shadow Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, Pat McFadden, told us their calculations are cautious. It adds up to billions of pounds and it won't stop because they never stop. They're already manoeuvring around Rishi Sunak now. Uh, the leadership candidates are already plotting. And if the Tories were to win the next election, this kind of thing and this cost would all simply carry on. Meanwhile, Rishi Sunak says the government is delivering on its childcare plan as the first parents in England benefit from 15 hours of taxpayer-funded care for two-year-olds. The policy is the first phase of a plan to dramatically expand funded childcare for working parents. The Prime Minister says it will build a brighter future for families and help to grow our economy. But Labour says families will struggle to access places. Former Home Office advisor Claire Pearsall says it's now up to nurseries to manage the extra places. I think we have to be really careful that you don't try and do too much too soon when you haven't got a guarantee of the places. Mm. If you speak to childcare providers, they're really concerned that they don't have the capacity to take in the funded places. So we need to ensure that we build out the capacity. Donald Trump's avoided having his assets seized after posting a $175 million bond in his civil fraud case. The former U.S. president was at risk of having prime real estate like Trump Tower and Mar-a-Lago estate taken away from him. In February, he was found guilty of scheming to deceive banks and insurers by inflating his wealth. And an 80-year-old man has been arrested at Heathrow Airport after 27 years on the run. Richard Burrows was captured by police on Thursday after returning to the UK from Thailand. Extensive appeals were made by detectives to find Burrows after he failed to attend the start of his trial over alleged child sex offences at Chester Crown Court in 1997. He now faces 11 counts of indecent assault and two of a serious sexual offence. That's the latest weather time now with Isabel Lang. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather. Hello there. There will be some sunshine today, but top and tail of the country, there'll be some rain. We've got cold, uh, cold weather across eastern Scotland with outbreaks of rain this afternoon in the south. We've got this next veil of cloud heading in to bring some really soggy weather to end the day across much of southern England and south Wales. And you can see that also approaching uh, quite quickly this afternoon with freshening winds. In between, yes, some milder, sunnier spells, but there will be a few showers dotted about. Highest temperatures in the south and east at 13 to 16. 17 degrees, just about possible. Now, as we head through this evening and tonight, it stays wet and cold in the northeast, a bit of snow for Grampian. Across the south, we've got that wet weather continuing to push its way northwards across more central areas. It'll be heavy and persistent and get some tricky driving conditions as well. A lot of mist and murk over the hills as well, not particularly pleasant. It does turn a bit drier by the end of the night and quite mild for most, just a bit of frost in the far north of Scotland. And then for Wednesday, well, it's a pretty messy picture. Low pressure creeping into the Irish Sea, throwing that rain right across more central parts of the country. Heavy and thundery across some parts of northern England through the afternoon. In the south, at least some brighter spells where it will feel warmest. Times Radio sponsors Talk TV Weather.
Good afternoon. Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia hartley Brewer, and you are with Talk TV. Still with me, of course, in the studio is Tom Slater, editor of Spiked Online. Good morning to you. Get your thoughts on uh, what we've been talking about all morning. It's all over lot of the front pages as well. We're asking about J.K. Rowling, who's uh, challenged Scottish police to arrest her over a new hate crime law that criminalises, among other things, calling a trans woman a man. Do you support her? Tell us why you do. Tell us why you don't. I'd love to hear you if you don't. Give us a call on 0344 499 1000. Text on 8722 or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Calls to charge at the national rate. Text costs one standard network rate message. Uh, but of course, uh, our, our listeners and our viewers far too sensible to disagree. JK Rowling being a hero to many of us. And I imagine she is also to our next guest because joining me right now to talk about this in more detail is Labour MP Rosie Duffield, a woman who knows firsthand about the aggression of some trans activists. Good afternoon to you, Rosie. Hi, Julia. Thanks so much. Now, you face uh, issues within your own party, indeed, even uh, being, you know, trying to get you to, well, basically, you know, you're a woman, shut your mouth, stop saying things which uh, some people don't like, and even if they are no, factually true. Um, first of all, just what do you make of the new hate crime law in Scotland? It came into force yesterday, um, and it was support, it's not just the SNP, it was supported by Labour supported by the Greens and the Lib Dems, indeed, even a couple of uh, Tories as well. Um, and in terms of the impact it's going to have on freedom of speech. I think it's a really muddled law. I think people are really confused about whether or not they're going to be committing a hate crime. And I think in particular, like you've mentioned, and your T-shirt alludes to, um, this is about women not knowing if they are going to be even involved in this or accused of all kinds of things like misgendering. And obviously we need hate crime laws about, you know, things like Islamophobia, Islamophobia, racism, all the awful things that people can get away with. But but mostly they're legislated with, this, this just adds strength to kind of prosecuting those people. But if you're a woman who uses their instincts to ask a man to leave a women's bathroom, for example, are you then going to be accused of misgendering or a hate crime? Where does it stop? It's really unclear. That is the worry, isn't it? And by the way, for those who have just tuned in or you're listening, uh, as, as most of our audiences, um, my T-shirt, it's just a statement of fact. Woman, women is the plural. Uh, it's a noun and it says adult human female. I mean, that would mean I would know what a woman is. That is what we've always used uh, the word woman to use. Mm -hmm to mean uh, until uh, very recently where for some reason the elites decided that actually a woman was anyone who said they were a woman and uh, not an adult human female. Indeed, people have actually faced a question by the police even for this statement, a woman is an adult human female, therefore a trans woman is a man and not a woman. Um, but this is it. We, we, none of us is in favour of hate speech. I don't want people walking around going up to someone who is gay being homophobic or a woman being misogynistic or a black or an Asian person and being racist or, or a trans person and just going out of their way to be insulting Absolutely. and abusive. Yeah. But it's where we draw the line on these things, isn't it? Um, it's where the statements yeah. of fact, like a trans woman is a man, are, are, are deemed hateful because some people find it offensive. But but also even just the, the idea that, well, I think I think human beings, they love, but they also hate. And it's where you cross the line into being abusive or where you cross the line mm. into being threatening or inciting uh, violence against someone. But should we have our speech controlled to that extent? I don't think so. And the, as I understand it, the police got two hours training on how to sort of implement this law and how to an analyse whether people are breaking it or not. And it took three years to come to pass. So it's just been done in a really bizarre kind of Mickey Mouse way. And the fact that women are not included in the list of protected characteristics who could be on the receiving end of a hate crime makes it even more confusing. And the Scottish government said, yes, but we're doing that separately. But when? It took yeah. three years to get this sort of confusing law through. So when is that going to be made a law? Yeah. It, it, nobody really understands it, I don't well, think. Whereas we always have protected characteristics since we brought in discrimination yeah. laws, you know, sex, i.e., you know, against women or men or, or race or religion or disability, uh, and sexuality. And again, I the vast, vast majority of people in this country would stand by that. Um, but the yeah. key thing here is also, it does affect people in England as well as people in Scotland, or anyone, any yes. constituent part of the UK. This all, anybody could say, I mean, I saw this tweet or this interview or, I don't mm. know, this woman's T-shirt on telly in Scotland 
uh, either online or TV or radio or news in print, and I'm offended, or I think someone else might be offended. You don't even need to... Mm. And then the police could investigate. We've had confirmation, have we not, from a, uh, a Scottish SNP minister that the sort of thing that you know, J.K. Rowling in particular tweets could be deemed something that was worthy of a police investigation. Now, whether it ended in a, uh, the foolishness of her being charged with a crime, whether it ended with her having a non-crime hate incident recorded against her, both of these would be risible. But let's just go through what she said, because J.K. Rowling tweeted yesterday, April the 1st, the day this law came in. Also, April Fool's Day, rather amusingly. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, she tweeted uh, pictures of 10 high-profile trans people, including sex offenders, uh, ridiculed their yeah. claims to be women, uh, including double rapist Isla Bryson, who she referred to as a lovely Scottish lass. Now, she was just basically <laughs> at the end of it, said, ha ha, April Fool, of course these people aren't women, they are men. And then she basically used the hashtag, arrest me, and basically said, you know, I'm abroad at the moment, but when I return, I look forward you know, to the Scottish police questioning me and arresting me. Um, the reality is, this does happen to women and yeah. men who say this. Do you think it will happen in JK's case, or do you think that... It's entirely possible. She's making a joke about it there, just to highlight the ridiculousness of this really confusing law, where nobody really knows when it's going to happen, if it's going to happen, whether the tweets that we like uh, are deemed crimes. And there's this um, added sort of weirdness where you can report these crimes anonymously in a salmon farm or a sex shop or a mushroom farm or something like that. And yes, you should be able to report them anonymously, but how anonymous is it if you go to your local salmon farm and tell the people selling salmon that you've had it. I mean, it's all, it's, it's kind of beyond satire, yeah. really. I mean, again, yeah, you know, there, there are hubs where people can go, they really want to encourage it. But you also touched on people, you know, accidentally breaking the law, not meaning to, to yeah. cause offence, although some of us are quite happy to cause offence. I think, I don't think you have a right not to be offended. Um, but, but we mm -hmm. have had, you know, the absurd situation where the Scottish uh, police, you know, put out, you know, videos and advice saying, you know, you might accidentally, you might unknowingly <laughs> be breaking the law, unwittingly, but, you know, but also this affects affects people in their own homes. Your kids could knock yeah. on you and say, oh, you know, mum, mum didn't let me stay out late on a Friday night or I've got my pocket money docked. Oh, by the way, my mum also said this about, you know, trans person or a black person. Now, that is, again, we are, when we say the phrase Orwellian, you know, it's overused, but that seriously is Orwellian. I think this is what happens when you make legislation kind of on the, on the hoof like this, just from social media. And I think we're seeing that happen quite a little bit at the moment. Um, it happened in um, the English Parliament the other day when we were talking about conversion therapy. Yeah. It was obvious that so few people actually understood what was involved in the law and whether or not we should make it a law to outlaw something that was already illegal and that it would be a catch-all law where speech and even the sort of desire to get therapy and talk about issues and as you said discuss it in families could then be deemed illegal so this it, it's just it's it's kind of law by children almost it's not thought through it's not proper yep. grown-up and serious legislation and, and yet, I think that's the bigger point for me and yet Labour MSPs in Holyrood they voted to support this along with Lib Dems and Greens and indeed a couple of the Tories as well we've had um Keir Starmer sort of I don't know well representatives today the ministers out on the round sort of sort of backtracking a bit on this and not supporting this, but we know this one mm. of the threats from a Labour government is that there would be this extension of the hate crime laws. Is there a is there a rift between the Scottish Labour Party and the Westminster Labour Party on this? Or does actually the Labour Party, and you've experienced this with, with, with your hounding that you've, you've had and you've not been protected by the Labour leadership, are they fully signed up to this? I've no idea, Julia. I'm not party to these insider conversations. And to be frank, as a backbencher, I've no idea who decides these things. I just read them in the paper or hear a senior shadow minister announce that we're not, like last summer, that we're not going to introduce self-ID. And then I kind of read all the articles and, it's, you know, they don't speak to me about it. But um, it does seem that whatever laws we decide or put in our manifesto, probably the Scottish Labour Party will follow on from that rather than the other way around. But but yeah, you're right. I mean, what happens in Scotland probably will filter down to us if we're not watching very carefully. No, indeed. Uh, but we are watching very carefully. JK really happy to go to mm. prison on this issue. I know I am. I've said my husband would be like, things you're willing to lose your job for, go to prison for. And, you know, you know what? The, the, the ability 
the right to speak facts, to state absolutely incontrovertible truths. Um, it's not a yeah. protected belief that trans women uh, are, are, are men. It is, it is a simple matter of biological fact. It's not hateful. It's not, I, that's something I'm, I'd be delighted and thrilled to share a prison cell with J.K. Rowling and indeed your good Me self. Me too. Do you look, yeah, you look forward <laughs> to joining us. I think, I think women's snacks. prisons are going to be a, quite a good, fun place to be for a while. Yeah, why not? I mean, it is very serious though, Julia. We yeah. make jokes about it, but we're speaking for women who risk losing their jobs, who yeah. can't afford to, and we've got a platform and we are very privileged compared to most people. But the amount of women that sidle up to me and tell me that they support me, but they're too scared to do so in public yeah. is just, you know, and as an MP, I'm connected with ordinary people every single day. We get several hundred emails a week. And I know that the majority of certainly this country support the fact that if you want to call out a man in a woman's space you should be able to do so absolutely well all power to you but thank you very much indeed uh, labour mp rosie mm -hmm. duffield um just a quick word uh, from uh, tom slater who's joining us in here i mean this thing and we discussed this a little bit earlier on the show uh, you know jk Rowling. she's a multi-millionaire very powerful very uh, uh, you know celebrated figure she's been something of a hero when she does this it goes to the front page of the papers and we discuss it on the tv and the radio but actually <laughs> Thousands upon thousands of, of men and women are, are, are finding themselves cancelled, censored, losing their jobs, being threatened with losing their jobs for saying exactly the same stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and indeed millions more feeling, I don't want to say anything because I can't afford to lose my job. Absolutely. And it's those people who are hit the hardest by this, but those are the people, those are the cases of censorship and cancellation that you never hear about because they're not seen as newsworthy. So that's why it's absolutely right that, and absolutely laudatory that someone like J.K. Rowling is taking this stand when she really doesn't have to. Mm. It's because, in fact, it's not really about her. It's about the people much further down the, the pecking order, as it were, financially, who wouldn't be able to defend themselves against it. Yeah. might not even know the tripwires... Although you can off. join the Free Speech Union. <laughs> I'm a member of the Free Speech Union. I just, I honestly, they, they've set up an office in Edinburgh to be able to handle the, what they believe will be a deluge of cases. Uh, it's going to be fascinating to watch, isn't it? Well, look, I've been asking you to get in touch all day. Tell me whether you think you agree, well, you agree with J.K. Rowling or you don't agree with her on her stance on this and indeed my stance and that of, uh, of Rosie Duffield and indeed Tom. Ah, pretty much sane people thinking alike. Who knew? Um, but not everyone does agree. Well, joining me right now is former SNP councillor Austin Sheridan. A good uh, afternoon to you, Austin. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us. Um, J.K. Rowling says, you know, this is just freedom of speech and belief are at an end in Scotland if the accurate description of biological sex is deemed criminal. She says, I'm currently out of the country, but if what I've written here qualifies as an offence under the terms of the new act, I look forward to being arrested when I return to the birthplace of the Scottish Enlightenment, and then the hashtag arrest me. Should J.K. Rowling be arrested? Well, of course, it's not a criminal offence to talk about facts. It's not a criminal offence to criticise um, or to question government legislation. Um, so, for example, the, um, the, the, the Gender Recognition Reform um, that, that, that was passed in the Scottish Parliament um, that, that, that has since been blocked by the UK. Um, I mean, that was something um, that J.K. Rowling, um, you know, tended to focus on. Uh, but I, I just find it very interesting because, I mean, the whole point of this legislation is to give people a level playing field to make sure um, that, you know, that people are protected against hate and that, you know, that people aren't being discriminated against. I mean, J.K. Rowling, um, you know, as a woman who's used her wealth um, in order to, to try and silence her critics, um, has so, she? How has she done I mean, that? I mean, I mean, she says she's a how, how has she done speech, that, Austin? But at the end of the day, when people have been critical of her, um, she's tended, she tends to use her wealth um, in order to bring against legal action. How? Or, you know, against people who criticise her. She hasn't. I mean, what, I mean, lots of people like me have been saying she's been, she should have been suing people left, right and centre, people calling her a transphobe and other slurs on, on, on social media, and she hasn't been. Yeah. You said it's not a criminal offence to talk facts. And yet, a government minister with the SNP has, in the last two days, said yes, it would be it would they, they would be understandable if the police, and very likely under the new law, the police Scotland could interview, could probe an investigation into someone saying that a particular trans man, sorry, trans woman was a man, that that would be considered hate speech. Well, um, anything that is reported to the police, you know, would have, a, you know, a degree um, of investigation, you know, and, and how far that, Should how far it? that goes. What a waste of police um, time. Well, how far that goes um, would be up to the police, but the police, um, you know, would, would take any complaint um, made to them um, seriously, um, and, and they would then assess that 
um, and, and then decide what the best course of action um, would be moving forward. I mean, as we know, you know, when it comes to protected characteristics, um, for example, uh, you know, when it comes to race, you know, it was 1986 that that legislation, you know, has been introduced. This is something, you know, um, that, that the police, you know, are familiar with. Well, why did we need a new law? Why did we need a new law that, that, that protects the characteristics of someone being trans, but it doesn't protect women? They're saying they're going to, as, as Rosie Duff will point out, bring in uh, another law. I mean, I don't, why do why do we need more protection? We talk a lot about you know, people you know, taking offence and hate speech, but I mean, I, I'm not a free speech absolutist. I don't want people being abusive. Things, but but we already have to. You know, if you abuse someone or threaten someone, particularly if they have protected characteristics, and trans comes under that, then then you're already breaking the law. Why do we need a new law that's specific about hate speech? Yeah, um, I mean, so, so so for example, I mean, uh, it's about extending existing laws. So, I mean, if you look at, say, the Equality Act of 2010, there's lots of, you know, there's lots of legislation there already, you know, um, you know that, that that does protect um, characteristics and, for example, same-sex species, which, by the way, you know, is extremely important to somebody who who supports the, the gender recognition reform. Um, I also absolutely um, agree that it has to be you know, um, single sex spaces, you know, in circumstances. So, so say for example, Ayla Bryson, you know, who J.K. Rowling, you know, chose to, um, you know, um, chose to use as an example, um, you know. Ayla Bryson was day, a double rapist. She was going to be put into yes. a women's prison, even though Ayla Bryson person. is a man, because you, yeah. you can't rape unless you've got a penis, and if you've got a penis, you're a man. Yeah. Ah, now, but, but Nicholas Sturgeon anyone never accepted sense. that he was a man. Well, anyone with common sense would know that that person shouldn't have been in a female person? prison. And I'm glad that the Scottish Sorry, can I, can I ask you know, him, that person that. or that man? Sorry? You said that person, that. Ida Bryson. That person or that man? No, well, yeah, man. I mean, I, mean, I, I He's a man. to say that person. Why can't well, you say I, man? Because, because regardless, you know... The, the, no, regardless no, 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 it does matter. He's a man. He's got a penis. He used his penis to violently sexually assault two women. He's been convicted of that. He can call himself Isla. He can put a blonde wig on and leggings on, but he's a man because women can't rape. Women, women don't have penises. They can't rape. So why do you say person instead of man? Well, um, I say person because that's how I would refer to anyone. Uh, uh, it's, it's nothing to do with how they identify as, uh, you know, as a person. Um, I just use the terminology person. And, you know, um, when I was chosen to describe... Are you happy to use the word man? Are you happy to use the word man? No, I would just describe no. as, a, as a person. I, I, you can't I tend, say man. I, you can't call speech, a rapist a man. I tend not to use pronouns, you know, in, in my general speech. Um, I, I tend to say that person. Because, because the reason I do that is because it's about focusing on the crime um, that that person had committed. As Nicholas and Sturgeon we, we said, know, that, that, that person is a rapist. That that person should not have been in a female prison. I'm glad that, that the Scottish Prison Service that uh, rectified that, and they should be in the male estate. So that's yeah. something you know. But this is I where we get into. Okay, this is where we sense. get into. Okay, you know he's a man. I know he's a man. I know that you know that I know that you know he's a man. We're, we're into we're into joke territory here, and this is why people think that politicians are all completely loopy now when they do this and they play these silly games. So I, one reason why Nicholas Sturgeon is out of office. It's why Humza Yusuf is a laughing stock. Keir Starmer a laughing stock for a lot. There's a lot of people very resentful of Rishi Sunak for saying at party conference, you know, a man is a man's woman's woman, but not doing anything about it, saying he supports J.K. Rowling, but not doing anything about it. At the end of the day, women like me, like J.K. Rowling and others, and men, uh, they will make statements of fact, and you said we shouldn't have a criminal offence for talk, saying, saying facts, but they will be investigated by the police. And as many have said, the process is actually the punishment. You can have your phones taken away, it's accusation, people face losing their jobs because they won't state the abject lie that, it, that a man is a woman or can become a woman. Um, but, but you think that this law is fine. It's not a problem because it won't criminalise those people. We've already got non-crime hate incidents in, across the UK. You know, and certainly in England, we've got hundreds of thousands of people who've got records against them. We've had Murdo Fraser, Scottish MSP, who's had the Free Speech Union working behind him to get a non-crime hate incident he wasn't even aware of, struck from his record. Even if J.K. Rowling or me were not actually found guilty or the CPS refused to actually carry through a, uh, a, a, a proper criminal prosecution, we could still have a non-crime hate incident recorded against us for stating a biological fact. You think that's OK? 
Well, um, let's take the Murder Fraser um, you know, example. Um, is that this happened before uh, this legislation uh, was brought in? Um, so uh, that has absolutely nothing to do, um, you know, uh, with the legislation. Uh, no, but it could happen tomorrow. Today. Well, uh, but, but it's already happened, and um, so it had nothing to do with the legislation that's just that that's been passed and brought into force. And um, you know, yesterday, as I say, that was something that had already happened before this legislation uh, was put in place. So you can't blame this legislation for something Not that happened. happened. But we've you already know, got that situation. Okay, let me Sorry? just ask you just finally. Okay, look, if we don't know what a man is and we don't know what a woman is, which apparently our political elites don't. How do we maintain, and you mentioned them earlier, the safe spaces for women, toilets, changing rooms, um, women's refuges, um, uh, women's prisons. If we can't identify you're a man, you're a woman, and the relevant thing not being what they feel on a Wednesday afternoon, but whether or not they are biologically a man or a woman, um, if you can't identify them, how do you protect those single uh, sex spaces? Well, that's the thing is, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how you, um, you know, really? how you, you can really fundamentally easy. replace these things. I mean, I mean, for example, I know, um, you know, lots of trans women um, who, you know, who you wouldn't be aware that they were trans women. I know trans men so what? that you would not be aware that they were trans so men. I mean, I mean, I don't exactly know, um, you know, how you would intend, you know, to police toilets or, or police changing rooms. We I mean, I wish you're planning to have somebody to, to stand there and inspect people's genitalia, for example. That's after, not what anyone's uh, you know, asking. I, 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 really, I really don't understand how, you, how that would be working. I don't, think that, I don't think anyone is remotely suggesting that. That's one of the silly things that people suggest. We actually police these things already because if you're in a pub and a bloke walks into the girl's, the, the lady's toilet, there will be an awful lot of shouting by men and women to get them out well, there. That's the that norm. Of course there would be, because that would be the norm. But, but for example, you know, um, if there was a female transitioning to male... Um, no, no, a female can't transition to male. male. You can't... A no, no, that, female is I'm a biological sure term. It's not possible. I'm why they were in the female type. No. Austin, you don't think so? No, I... I, I know so. Austin, Sheridan, we'll have to leave it there. Time's against us. I hope you'll come on again. I, I, when, when this inevitably, when the proverbial inevitably hits the fan, I hope you'll come on again on this. Former SNP councillor, uh, Austin Sheridan, thank you so much. Still with me in the studio is Tom Slater. Off you go. <laughs> that, <laughs> folks, that's your brain on gender ideology, I'm afraid to say. I mean, Austin is, is entitled to believe all kinds of wacky things that he can believe that Isla Bryson is actually a woman rather than a male rapist. He can believe that up is down, that the water isn't wet and that the sky is green. That's absolutely fine. What he can't do is impose those views on society, destroy single sex spaces and even remove women's ability to complain and to argue against it. But that's precisely what his government that, and his party That is. What it, it, and it is so much more sinister than just the simple, you know, what people are tweeting. Absolutely. Because say, people are losing their jobs and their livelihoods. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and could possibly lose their freedom. And fundamental protections for women's rights and spaces yeah. and safety. And it's not about having someone inspect someone's genitals as they walk through. It's no. a ridiculous myth. It's about women having the right to complain and the right to It's a six-foot bloke with a beard who's put a wig on, now. who's claiming he's in the ladies' loo because he's a woman and he's not. Can someone get him out of mm -hmm. here, please? That is what it's about, and we, and we all know. And we know this is what has been happening as well. We're not making it up, it's been happening. Anyway, uh, we are asking you about J.K. Rowling challenging the Scottish police to arrest her over the new hate crime laws that criminalise calling a trans woman a man. I want to know, do you support her? Do you, do you not? Tell us why you do, tell us why you don't. You can call 0344 499 text 87222, or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Hugo's done that and says, just because the truth hurts, sometimes it doesn't mean it should be arrested. Neil says, even Rishi Sunak has said what 99% of the country think it can't be a crime to state biological fact except he's allowed it to be there is still uh, an issue here uh, and Lee says yes 100% support for her I don't even like her books either but she stands for biological truth you don't have to be a Harry Potter fan to like JK today uh, some of you have also been getting in touch on the phones please do keep those calls coming in let's go to Paul who's in Manchester hello Paul hiya Julia hello. how are you very well indeed so are you on JK's side or not uh, no, I'm not on JK's side. Um, firstly, I wanted to say that I'm actually a working class 
gay person from the north mm -hmm. i think it get it think it gets forgotten sometimes that um there's a lot of working class lgbt people who live in red wall areas i think everyone down south yeah. thinks that we we all look and sound like jack and vera duckworth and we don't <laughs> so I think it's nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that okay so tell me why you don't agree with jk well, i think that te um tweet was it on um whenever she wrote it i'm not on yes, twitter no. but um i think it was a bit cruel to to write that i just think why would you why would you want to write something as harsh as that what was, what, what, what was cruel and what was harsh about her tweets you've seen them with the papers pretending that it's an april fool's you know like an april fool's joke and um i just think um there's, there's i think both sides of the argument can get too feisty it's like a lot of things and Sometimes there's a middle ground, but uh, one thing that puzzles me is, is why trans men are never getting mentioned in all this. And the other thing is, is um, if people want trans women to go back to their own toilets, what you know, biological men, then surely trans men have to go back to their own toilets. Dressed yeah, no, as men. I, I'll tell you why trans men, i.e., women who identify as if they are men, they're, they're not mentioned much because they're not a physical threat. To men, they're not a threat to women's sport, for instance, because they're not going to be able to compete against uh, against men. So that they, it just hasn't been the same issue. They're not they're not entering, you know, men's refugees refugees so domestic violence. They're not entering men's prisons. This isn't this isn't happening. A not on the same scale, and B there isn't the physical threat to men posed by women. But how would you feel if... Because I, I have a trans male best friend and I know a lot more trans men than trans women. And um, how would women feel if trans men who now have beards and they look like men go mm -hmm. back to women's toilets? Because then people won't know whether they're a trans man. That's, or no, that is true. I, I would say on balance, I think, you know, we often have, you know, disabled toilets, not, not calling it a disability, but just a toilet, the private cubicle, I would have thought would be a much simpler, easier way. But I, I certainly think that for women and for girls, I think it is better that, uh, that people who don't look like women, who aren't women, are not in the women's toilets because there isn't the same issue for a, a woman who believes that she is living as a as a man, that isn't the same issue. But yeah, it's a murky, complicated world, and it's difficult to have something that works for everybody. But the crucial thing is, you don't throw the rights and the safety of half of the population out the window because a tiny minority of people don't fit into a direct category. But do you think sometimes, it, if you look at it the other way around, LGBT people can be unsafe around non-LGBT people as well. It's not just a one-way one, one way thing. And a lot of trans people I know don't actually want to mix in wider society. They're just happy to mix at, well, at trans groups, LGBT Well, and that would be their choice. Well, I, I mean, I know a lot of LGB people who are very unhappy about trans people trampling on their rights, particularly young lesbian women. Um, but there's also the issue, look, the thing is, when you talk about safety, you talk about safety of women, safety of men, safety of gay people, safety of trans people, do you know who the threat is to all of those people? Men. Now, not all men, and this is not an anti-men thing, this is that we can't tell just at the gl first glance when you walk into a changing rooms or a toilet or anywhere else, which man could be a threat. But I tell you what, every woman who goes into the loos and there's a man in there, every woman who's walking down the street at night and they're aware that a man's behind them, they don't know if it's one of the nice majority of men who would be horrified that they were thought of as a predator or if it's one of the small minority who could attack and hurt them. And, but it's men, it's not women posing that threat. No, I get your point, but also we have a festival in Manchester called Sparkle. Mm. It's a transgender festival, and a lot of non-LGBT people yeah. like to come to that. So why do they want to come to that if they don't want to be around well, LGBT? Because most and people don't have any... Most people in this country don't have an issue with anyone being gay or bi or trans. We live and live and let live. What we're saying is, uh, you know, and especially as a woman, I don't, I don't want my rights as a woman and my daughter's rights as a girl to be trampled on by a small minority whose, whose issues are the same as mine in terms of their risk of being attacked by a man. But do you think we should just do away with communal toilets altogether and have 
loads of disabled type toilets because and I reckon a lot of people don't like being in communal toilets generally so yeah. that's maybe something the government individual toilets may be easy yeah but again you know it's a cost issue and it's a space issue for many venues and where there is space I would suggest a separate I would suggest that trans people use use the you know the the, the toilet that's on its own but again I don't think that trans rights should trample women's rights where you can have both that's wonderful but I'm sorry I think 51% of the population gets to have their say I'm going to have to leave it there Paul but I so appreciate you calling in thank you very very much indeed do please call in again that's her Paul in Manchester coming up after the break a British national and six other aid workers have been killed in a suspected Israeli strike in Gaza Israeli military say they're carrying out a detailed investigation I'm Julia Hartley Brewer and you're with Talk TV Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. All Rosie. right, oi, oi, treat go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. Now, you might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram, as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, listen. <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Huh? I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. That's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> ah, <laughs> a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So <laughs> yeah. Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, they put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist what, what, did fail to, her. Yeah, we're absolutely. Supposed to it was another era. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth. British National and six other aid workers have been killed in a suspected Israeli strike in Gaza. The Israeli military said that it's carrying out an in-depth examination to understand the circumstances of this tragic incident. Uh, both the Foreign Secretary David Cameron and the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak have uh, spoken out on this issue. The Prime Minister has said he's asked Israel to investigate urgently what happened and he says that uh, their view uh, is that there have been too many civilian deaths in Gaza. Now, uh, joining me right now to discuss this is former NATO and Royal Navy Commander Rear Admiral Admiral Dr. Chris Parry. Good afternoon to you, Chris. Hi, Julia. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, look, we've been in situations before where ag accusation is the IDF has carried out an airstrike and you're responsible for uh, killing new hundreds of people in a hospital airstrike which wasn't carried out by the IDF and didn't kill hundreds of people, interestingly. In terms of what's happened here, do we know for certain yet whether it was the IDF? No. 
there's uh, absolutely no evidence. Uh, there's no visual evidence. Um, there's uh, certainly a number of things that are quite odd about the vehicles that you see. Uh, the basic problem is that uh, even when you do get damaged by the Israelis, um, people interfere with the evidence. They gild the lily. Uh, they try and make it look like it's something else. If you look at that picture you're seeing at the moment, look at the doors and the windows. If you've got an explosion, they normally blow the windows and the doors out. Um, just, so, just to describe for I, I people who were, Chris, just people who are listening rather than, than, than watching. Again, it was, it was a white van, but it's got the, uh, the, the, the logo for the charity, the World Central Kitchen, which is a huge, yeah. uh, huge um, aid uh, charity. Uh, they've been working there. We say we understand that all the aid workers did have their flak jackets on, their uh, bulletproof vests, which had their logo on as well, and, and that showed a sort of a really, you know, big sort of mark uh, and explosion in the. Uh, in the, the top of the uh, uh, of the building, oh, obviously of the of the vehicle, and and devastation inside. But as you say, the doors the doors are appearing to still be intact. Well, there's more than one vehicle, Julia. Yeah. That's the other thing. Um, and uh, I'm afraid to say the way that it's presented, uh, it looks fishy. I, I I've no idea whether the Israelis did it or not, to tell you the truth. Um, but you've got to ask yourself: this is an organisation that can perfectly target. Uh, people in a building in Damascus and not kill anybody else. Uh, and yet they seem to have made a mistake here. It, it's not consistent. But but we do uh, know the mistakes do happen in the fog of war. We do, do know that. And, and again, it may have been uh, a, 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 a mistargeted or they may have targeted the convoy. We're told it was a humanitarian convoy. They may have targeted the convoy uh, believing that it was military. Now, that's the difficulty, isn't it, with Hamas, who blatantly use... Um, you know, humanitarian targets and civilian targets as shields. Yeah, the other problem is, Julia, is that, uh, you know, Hamas want this to happen uh, because it, it sparks the sort of political and public outrage that you're seeing here. So uh, I, I do worry about Hamas setting up these aid workers uh, as false flags. Um, so uh, it may well be that that's the case. But, you know, everything from the Israelis having done it by mistake or deliberately all the way through to a set up by Hamas is perfectly possible. Uh, I mean, quite a lot of people are saying who are experts in this, it looks like uh, an improvised explosive device uh, that was probably intended for an Israeli vehicle. I mean, that's one possibility as well. I know from our time in Bosnia, uh, this sort of damage would have been blamed on a cruise missile. Uh, but you and I, Julia, both know the cruise missile would take most of the, the building alongside it out as well. And yet people very happily spread around that it was um, it was a cruise missile rather than a car yeah. bomb. And this uh, is... The answer is, Julia, I, I don't know. Don't know. But that, okay? and, that, but... and that's very important. But I don't know is very important in the fog of war. You know, there are things we are told and the things we can know. Um, and the reality is that we, the IDF, the Israeli government, they would be crazy to be deliberately targeting humanitarian aid workers, especially with foreign nationals, uh, because it puts other governments that have been supportive, perhaps being less supportive, uh, in a difficult position. But are you disappointed, just find it, by the reaction of, uh, of Western leaders being more, talking more and more about humanitarian pause, putting pressure on the Israelis, when so much of the pressure, even with that UN vote, has been about... You know, Israel stopping bombing in Gaza, stopping forces in Gaza. But so little pressure seems to be going on Hamas to release the hostages and to stop their war efforts. Absolutely, uh, Julia. The, the one thing that uh, I always worry about as an ex-military man is everybody's crying for a ceasefire, but nobody says what's happening after that. Yeah. Um, nobody has a plan. Uh, if somebody says ceasefire and here's a plan, I'd be happy. But the only people with a plan right now are the Israelis, and they're getting on with it. And right now, the plan is working from their point of view. Why would they give up? Really interesting to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Dr Chris Paris, still with us is uh, Tom Slater. Um, there is a concern in terms of six months this Sunday will be mm. the anniversary of the October 7th massacre. The whole focus now is all on, and you can see it even in the supposedly sort of neutral reporting uh, that's going on um, in, in Gaza, it's, it's all around. And understandably about the humanitarian disaster there and civilians being, you know, it's basically starving, malnutrition, being bombed, removed from their homes. Um, but... <laughs> People seem to forget, like, what is the alternative? As if the alternative is some sort of, you know, Lib Dem coalition running Gaza. Absolutely. There's so much willful naivety about this. And there's so many ridiculous expectations being kind of piled upon Israel. The idea that Israel should respond to this assault into its southern territory by just, you know, throwing open the negotiations and talking about some sort of two-state solution is that was never going to happen. The, the clear 
first thing that needs to take place is that Hamas needs to be removed as a yeah. threat. It poses something which no nation would be expected to put up with in so far as its capacity to menace and murder and brutalise its citizens. And anyone who can't accept that, I think, is, is not worth engaging with in the first place. Yeah, deliberately. that's the fundamental thing. I always ask people when they tell me, oh, it's just proportional, all this, and mm. I would say, okay, what would be proportionate? Never need to get an answer on that. Uh, but also, what do you think we as the British uh, would do if that had happened on, on our shores? Mm -hmm. And I think it'd be a lot worse than what Israel is doing. And we wouldn't be held to such a high account. Never can remember, what is the reason why Israel's hold to a, held to a higher account than other nations? Can never put my finger on it. What is it that distinguishes what it? What is it about? Oh, yeah. what is it? I know. Well, you know, do you feel free to get in touch at any time? I'd love to know. Anyway, uh, we've been asking you today about J.K. Rowling challenging Scottish police over her arrest. Uh, oh, sorry, to arrest. Arrest her, sorry, you never know. In a few weeks' time, I might be saying over her arrest. Uh, the threat to arrest her over a new hate crime law that criminalises calling a trans woman a man. I want to know, do you support her and why? Or do you support her and tell us why not? Give us a call on 0344 499 1000, text 87222. Get in touch on X at Talk TV. Roger says, yes, I support her. The state doesn't have the right to tell you what to think. Uh, Marie says, I support her because if telling the truth is now illegal, there is no end to the control government can enforce. And Hannah says, no amount of Harry Potter magic can turn a man into a woman here to that. Coming up after the break, after 250 people a week have been dying needlessly because of long a &E waiting times, according to the Royal College of Emergency Medicine, and people are waiting up to a month to see their local GP. We'll talk about what can be done to rescue the NHS. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer, and you're with Talk TV. Very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaker. Now, you ain't going to happen and eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. Right, oi, oi, treat girl. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, not a woman, trans woman. Is a Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. And I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yay. Quite Yay. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Where is> it? <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the fourth blimp. Mr Khan apparently wasn't too keen on that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I, know it's, I know it's coming and I can't stop laughing. <laughs> so he suggested alternatives. There's a sweet potato. Uh, that's quite a small statue, then. Wasn't there also a prostitute? <laughs> oh, a trans... Sex worker. You don't really need one of those in Trafalgar Square. You've just got to walk up to Soho. So anyway, <laughs> just, 40 yeah. minutes, 40... Why do you know this? Because yeah. I know everything. Uh, was he just unlucky getting that question with an ice cream, or is it a sign of something more? Seemed like he was on a uh, late night show to attract a young demographic, and uh, it put him in an ice cream store. I read the statement this morning from the family. And if any police officer reads that statement, if you don't cry for what you read from what the family is saying, it's heartbreaking, then you shouldn't be a police officer. The UK, I'd say, has lots of racism within it. I don't necessarily think it's a racist country, but it permeates our institutions. Yeah, but for her to say, come out and vote, and by the way, t when I was 22 years old and I had an affair with a married man that I knew was married, the feminist failed me. I'm sorry. I think like, the feminist did fail her. We're supposed to, fail her. We're supposed to move on from era. that. She was 22. Mm. We're supposed to have moved on from that. Don't hark back on no. something you did that was wrong. Talk TV. It's the only place where you get the truth.
Welcome back to the show. I'm Julia Hartley Brewer. You're with Talk TV. Now, extraordinary figures released yesterday showing 250 people a week are dying needlessly because of long waiting times in A&E. That's according to a new report from the Royal College of Emergency Medicine. Today, it's emerged that people are waiting up to a month to see their GP. Well, joining me now to discuss this is medical commentator and GP at Same Day Doctor is Dr. Lawrence Gurless. A good afternoon to you, Lawrence. Hi, Julia. I mean, these figures are absolutely shocking on both counts, aren't they? Just initially getting into your GP or in an emergency, getting the care you need. People are dying. They, we know that. This is, you know, the experts are saying this. What do we do about it? Well, it, it's tragic, and I try to advise people to keep away from a &E. Part of me is relieved about these figures because, as you know, we've been running at excess deaths since the pandemic every week about 500 to 1,000 people are dying, more than should be compared with the average. And no one's come up with an answer to that. Uh, Sir Chris Whitty, who's a sensible chap, said it may be that doctors aren't prescribing statins. I never believed that. At least we now have a partial explanation that some of them are dying because they're not getting timely treatment in A&E. So we know that. As for the rest of them, we're not sure. I think the anti-vax conspiracists like to blame vaccines. It's post-COVID. It's uh, access to general practice. It's all not working. As you say, waiting a month to get in to see a GP. Look, it's Tuesday today. I've been working all weekend. My local GP practice, who I tried to contact on Thursday, has been closed all weekend. Yeah. That's their contract. That They're not contracted to be open bank holidays and weekends. So where health, do people Health go? is 24 7, 3, 6, 5, and that's issue. But we even found that even in hospitals, don't we, where people, you know, they'll, they'll yeah. go in. I mean, if you go in on a Friday, your chances of surviving no. are lower because you can't get the tests you need and therefore yeah. you're not under treatment. How do we change this, though? Is this the same in other countries? Because for years and years, you've had this whole, like, let's all worship at the feet of the of the NHS. And it's our, you know, the sacred cow. You can't criticise it. Um, and we're told that, you know, we've got the best, you know, the envy of the world. World. Look, the stats are really clear. Our health service is far from being the envy of the world. It's something of a laughing stock. Eastern Europe, Western Europe, most other Western nations, bar America, don't have any system like this and they still get their health care. So do we need to start having a sensible debate and saying it may not be the funding because huge sums of money have gone in. It may be the system itself that is the problem. Julia, I've been having this sensible debate with a lot of people for a lot of years, and I've come to the conclusion, this is slightly depressing, it's never going to change in this country. Never. If you, there are, the NHS is a state within a state with so many tribes, so many uh, lobby groups, so many self-interest. It's impossible to change, and uh, especially with uh, you know, what's going to happen after the next election, it's not going to change. And I know that's depressing. I agree with you, of course, it should change. I just want to tell people there is no secret plan right. to privatise right. the NHS. A lot of people say, oh, well, the government's running it down so they can privatise it. That has never been the case. It's one of these scare stories yeah. that people like to bring up. Jeremy Corbyn, the last election, saying, oh, we're going to sell the NHS to Donald Trump. Every election, someone threatens this. It, yeah. There's never it's been never that plan. Happen. Never, it's but, never but, going but, to happen. But, but a lot of people now waking up in terms of satisfaction with the NHS and understanding that actually, you know, it, it's not delivering. And it's not delivering for a huge sum of money that's being spent on it. Uh, for some reason, we seem to hire more, you know, bureaucrats than we hire more doctors and radiologists and the like. And, and the, you know, I mean, again, you know people who live from, who come from Eastern Europe, they go back to Eastern Europe to get yeah, treatment and then come back here. That should be a source of national humiliation for us. Well, everything is humiliating. But if you ask people what the answer is, no one says, I want to pay to see a doctor or I want to pay to take out insurance. Yeah. No one says that. They say we, we need to put more money in, but I'm not paying more tax. Yeah. Other but, people should But again, people say tax. it's free. It's not free. We're paying for no. it. Lawrence Gurless, thank you very much indeed. Tom Slater is still with me. Look, I'm NHS GP's daughter. I, you know, I don't want anyone to not go to the doctor because they can't afford to. Mm -hmm. But the NHS has expanded so much. And the cost so much, but we are we spend a fortune. We have we have a hu I mean, huge sums of money going into the NHS. So what's going wrong? I think what's going wrong is the absence of that debate and the ridiculous scare stories that take place when people say in opinion polls how much they appreciate the NHS. Mm. 
That's a reflection of the principle of free at the point of yeah. use. People are well, not... Well, they like their own personal GP. They like their own personal GP. They've had good experiences. It is not a reflection of, I really love this bureaucratic, centralised, <laughs> yes. wasteful structure that uses fax machines so but much. You say, but you would, think, you would think there'd be less bureaucracy because you haven't got all the private, you know, well, there's the, the social security system mm -hmm. the sort of, uh, that you've got uh, in, um, uh, in, in, in other European countries. Mm -hmm. You'd think that it would be more efficient, but it, apparently not. No, absolutely not. And there's a reason that no one has um, looked to emulate the way in which we do this. And what's depressing at the moment is that both parties have a very clear vested interest in not rocking the boat too no. much. Labour, because of its connection with the unions and the Tories, because they're be, terrified of looking like they're going after the NHS. But meanwhile, of course, all the people who are in charge all can get private health care because they can afford it so they can walk their way out of the system. Um, Tom Slater, pleasure to have had your company all today. Thank, Thank you. you very much indeed. Sadly, we have come to the end of the show. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please do join me same time tomorrow. Up next, it's Kevin and Alex. Have a great afternoon. I'm Julia Hartley-Brewer. You're with Talk TV. Hey, very good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. You're with Talk TV on TV, on radio, online. And we're on your smart speaking. Now, you ain't Talk. gonna have an eve it, me old Chinas, but a new report is calling for a new definition of cockney. All right, Jeremy, me old China. Rosie. All right, oi, oi, treat, go. When JK Rowling says, let's just be honest, it's all she's saying, let's just be honest. When a man goes out and kills, we should talk about them as what they are, a biological man. Trans woman, it's not a woman, trans woman. Is a man. Lee would have to go for much further than his statement. I mean, he, he did say that he spoke clumsily and he understood the Prime Minister's position, but I think he'd need to say that he'd got it wrong. Then I had a phone call this morning um, from Kim City Council, a lovely woman called Anna. And yeah, I've just received an email just saying um, that, yeah, I'm going to be getting a badge. Quite um, right, too. Yeah. Quite yeah. right, too. It's that time again to get the violins out. That's right. Prince Harry has lost his bid for UK security after moaning he'd been singled out. They might as well be discussing an invasion of Daleks for all I really get this. <laughs> but, but, but I am now on social media having been dragged off my eight pound Nokia reluctantly kicking and screaming. <laughs> I'm, I'm a huge hit on Instagram as you probably know. What are you doing? I'm just about to do it. Ooh, Ooh. It's carry on <laughs> what just happened. <laughs> Whoa, <Where is> it? <laughs> There was a suggestion by some that maybe it would be nice to put a statue of the Queen on the mm. 